Uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, ayan, Ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po. Uh, this public hearing of the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, joint with the Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development, Finance and Public Information and Mass Media is hereby called to order. So ulitin ko, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thanks for coming and... Uh, uh, the chair uh, acknowledges the presence of our, no less than, the Senate President, Senate, Senate President Tito Soto, and uh, from the minority, a, uh, the leader of, one of the leaders of the minority block, Senator Kiko Pangilinan, okay? O who else here? Okay. And others will, uh, will be arriving. So, with at least two senators present, there is clearly the presence of a quorum. So, Attorney Dana? Menjola, our committee secretary, will acknowledge now the presence of our resource persons. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, joined with the Committees on Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development, Finance, and Public Information and Mass Media, would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons of our distinguished guests, um, Executive Director Jose Tolentino, uh, former Chairman Sixto S. Brillantes Jr., former Commissioner Christian Robert S. Lim, Mr. Eli Moreno, Attorney Victor P. Lazatin, Mr. Eric Jude Alvia, Dr. Arwin Serrano, Mr. Orlando Sales, Mr. Hector Barrios, Ms. Maricor Acol, Attorney Emilio Marañon, Attorney Maria Luz Delfin, Mr. Barbie Atienza, Ms. Charmaine Bautista Pamintuan, Attorney Rudyard Arbolado, Dr. Sani Coloma, Attorney Cesar J. Poblador, Attorney Glenn Chong, Any more? Okay. That's all, Mr. Chair. Anyway, um, uh, Madam Secretary just recognized the resource persons as they arrive uh, later. Later, just call my attention. So, ulitin ko po, salamat po that you are all here. Uh, we have a uh, full agenda for today, ranging from uh, bills on local absentee voting plus early voting, uh, bills on regulating the rates of political propaganda, bills on increasing the uh, budget, overall budget for campaigns. And then uh, we will also do some uh, formalities like uh, disposing of uh, some uh, resolutions and bills which are already moot and academic. And we will also take up the privileged speech of the Senate President delivered on March 6 and 14, 2018, which uh, raises uh, four. Four, four issues. Okay, so maybe we can, uh, Attorney Dana, can let's go first with the, the easiest part uh, of disposing this moot and academic uh, matters. What, what are these? Okay, so let's go to... So if there is no objection from uh, the committee members, we will now archive House Bill number 7378, which was referred to this committee. This is entitled, An Act Postponing the May 14, 2018 Synchronized Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan Elections, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 9164, as amended by Republic Act number 9340, Republic Act Number 10656 and Re Republic Act Number 10923 and Republic Act Number 10952. Mr. Senate President. I, I, I so move. Okay. So uh, House Bill 7378 and the proposed uh, Senate Resolution 376 as well. Uh, that we archive. We archive for being a uh, and academic. So there being no objection, uh, the chair rules that uh, we do so. Uh, the but the proposed Senate resolution is about uh, calling on the Senate to immediately constitute and convene the JCOC on the AES, which we have already done. Okay, so let's now proceed to our pending bills. On the local absentee voting, 
and let's discuss this together with the early voting. So maybe in the discussion we can uh, uh, distinguish the two concepts. So Senate Bill Number 301, Senate Bill Number 1111, and House Bill Number 5661. So uh, can we get the in inputs? We start with the the chair of the Comelec, who is here, uh, Chairman uh, Sheriff Abbas. Good morning, Chair, members of uh, the committee. Uh, I would like to call Mr. Chair, the director of uh, the ECAD, for us to give our comment on the proposed bill. May we call Director Abaya? Yes, sir. Director Abaya, yes, you, you've been uh, recommended by the chair to be recognized. So please. Here, uh, next to Attorney Oxa, uh, to Mr. Oxalis, here to the right. Good, sir. Good morning, Senate President, Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in so far as uh, the bill uh, proposed by the uh, Honorable Senator De Lima, sir, considering that the bill proposes uh, for the local absentee voting for members of the AFP and the PNP, I would like to uh, inform the uh, honorable body that there is already a law providing for uh, local absentee voting for the members of the AFP and the PNP, particularly uh, Section 12 of Republic Act 7166. Uh, in so far as uh, the members of the media are concerned, we also have a law already passed, which is Republic Act 10380. In the bill proposed, there is also uh, an extension, a uh, proposed extension of the system to uh, election lawyers, including their support staff and also the electoral staff of candidates for the national posts. Yes, sir. So uh, on these uh, personalities, we still do not have a law. So uh, our, our comment, sir, is that uh, maybe we could just ask for a definition of who are considered the electoral staff of uh, the candidates so that we can properly identify them when they will apply for the system once the law is passed. Another thing, sir, uh, we noticed in the proposed bill that only lawyers for candidates for national positions are allowed. How about the lawyers for candidates for local positions? Yes, sir. And also for lawyers for political parties, they may also want to uh, avail, considering that all of these are similarly situated. Uh, we also have a question, sir, on how many lawyers or electoral staff should be allowed because under the proposed bill it only states here that they should not be more than the total number of local government units our question sir is uh, should we not uh, provide for a limit per political uh, number of uh, applicants per political unit or subdivision instead of a general uh, number or limit. 
And also, sir, we would like to uh, inquire from the committee, how about uh, extending also the uh, system, the privilege of uh, availing of the local absentee voting to other uh, sectors? Because in our committee, sir, we uh, have received requests, particularly from uh, the National Grid Corporation, where their personnel are assigned on election day to man the electric uh, requirements. In the last election, sir, we did not allow them, considering that they are not government officials. So probably the committee can also look into that. Also, we have requests from security guards, from uh, medical practitioners who are on duty during election day. So for, so that will be our comment, sir, for this bill. Thank you, sir. Thank you, but, but this bill, I think, uh, already provides the maximum number because we know the number of provinces, we know the number of cities and the municipalities. So, hindi lang niya na-specify yung actual number, but we can compute that, right? What is the name of your committee, Director? The Committee on Local Absentee Voting, sir. Committee on Local Absentee so any other uh, comments on the on the bills on uh, local absentee and early ca uh, director ca can you can you uh, make of record the distinction between local absentee voting and early voting because there is a bill on early voting take take magkaiba po yon right yes sir Apa, so uh, under the uh, current system of uh, local absentee uh, only the, p the positions for national, uh, only the candidates for national positions are elected. And uh, those who apply are those who are assigned outside the places of registration. Whereas in uh, early voting, those who apply, or uh, those who want to avail of this system, can apply and vote in their areas of uh, registration. And they can vote for local positions. So uh, in the local absentee voting, the counting of uh, the ballots cast is done at the central office. Whereas, yes, by our committee, sir. Whereas in, uh, in the early voting system, the counting will be done in the respective precincts for the uh, applicants or the voters voted. And, and we do not have yet an early voting system. As of now, yes. sir, none yet. Yeah, and while we, we already have a local absentee voting system. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other uh, inputs, observations from our guests? So I'm not expecting from the media, but from the, about those involved, like Namfrel, uh, sir? Mr. Bar Barrios? Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrios, please, uh, please uh, re state your organization, sir. Sorry, uh, I'm uh, I I'm from the Center for People Empowerment, CENPEG. I'm a fellow. Uh, I, my, my only other suggestion, I, I don't know the system or process provided for uh, absentee voting, but I, I, can su I should like to suggest na ingatan po mabuti yung controls. Uh, medyo makamaffectuhan po rito yung mga batch controls, uh, which we do normally to ensure that the total votes cast is equal to the total uh, votes issued. No? Yun lang po ang aking masuggest. Thank you. Tsaka, Director Abaya, no? Abaya. Uh, for example, there will be 80 candidates for senator. I-simplify na natin, 1,000 yung total number of uh, possible uh, electoral staff nila. So you will have 80,000 new uh, voters in your local absentee voting. Do you foresee a problem with this? Uh, how many voters do you have currently in the, or in the last election? More. Uh, in the 2016 election, sir, there were uh, about 24,000. 20,000 plus. Who applied. Yan. Yes, sir. Yes, diba? 20,000. Now, magta times four or times five ka. Can the committee handle it? Yes, sir. We do not find any problem on that. We can accommodate them.
A any other? Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of the minority leader, Senator Frank Drillon. Mr. Frank, okay, now. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Senate President. Perhaps uh, the, the information that we have gathered uh, would give your committee enough to data or um, uh, input to uh, finalize uh, whatever um, the committee would uh, prefer doing for Senate Bill 301, 1111, and 5661. Thank you. But uh, uh, this system of uh, early voting uh, requires or necessi necessitates another round of registration. Tama po ba yun, uh, Director Abaya? Uh, we only need to gather uh, a list or make a list of who will apply from among those who are PWD senior citizens. But they are already they should already have applied for registration in the regular registration proceeding, sir. Well, the, since we don't have an early voting system now, so there are, there are already PWDs and senior citizens I in our uh, voters Registry. list. Yes, so how, do, how will they now, let us say we adopt this into law, how will they now ap apply for this one? Another round? Uh, you, yes. you will designate a period where they will now register? Yes, sir. Uh, for them to file their manifestation to avail, because this is only in addition to their, uh, if they want to, uh, to vote in the regular precincts, or whether to apply for early voting. Okay, so we will now leave uh, those three bills uh, because so unless there are other inputs or no more. So let us now proceed to the privileged speeches of uh, the Senate President, which raises uh, four issues, which I will uh, summarize as follows. Number one, uh, early transmissions. In the 2016 elections, with early transmissions, a uh, foreign an, ac fo uh, an access of a foreign server into our uh, election server, uh, queuing servers, and then uh, the uh, untransmitted uh, election returns. Okay. So, se the, uh, Senator Soto, the Senate um, President. Mr. Chairman, may we um, ask that the Comsec uh, give the oath? to all the resource persons and all the invited guests. Okay, since this is, uh, this has a fact-finding uh, nature also. So uh, the committee secretary, attorney Minjola, will now administer the oath to all of you just so that you will be free to, uh, to uh, participate in the discussion or to share what you know about this uh, issue. May all resource persons please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, can I ask the committee secretary to name the, uh, the new arrivals? Uh, okay. So that for the record, you know. So, Mr. Gus Lagman is already here of uh, tra ED uh, of Transparent Elections. Well, Attorney Ivan John Wei, Mr. Edmundo G. Casino, Mr. Edison M. Diaz, Mr. Ramon Casiple. Police okay. Senior Superintendent Miranda, um, Attorney Dona uh, okay na po. Um, Attorney Demastenes B. Donato, um, Mr. Okay, okay, so they, uh, uh, yes, they all took their oaths. Okay, I will now, uh, at this point, I will now recognize the Senate President to deliver the two privileged speeches. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for calling this uh, public hearing. Uh, it's uh, many um, have uh, awaited this uh, chance to uh, be enlightened on the, the two privileged speeches that I, uh, that I delivered. So um, if with your permission and the, with the permission of our uh, colleagues, may I um, go direct to the questions uh, because I'm sure they all had copies of the privileged speeches. No? So my, um, 
My uh, first question is directed to both the Comelec and to Smartmatic. Um, gentlemen, on March 18, on March 2018, I should say, I requested uh, Comelec for the logs of its domain's uh, name server DNS named CNTA DNS. However, what was given by the Comelec were statement of votes and not the computer logs. Um, these were um, submitted to Senator Escudero. And recently I was informed that Comelec on April 12, 2018, provided a snapshot of the logs to Senator Escudero as chairperson of the JCOC. Um, can you also provide us now a copy of these logs? Um, these logs were the uh, early transmissions that I mentioned in my privileged speech, which started on May 8, one day before election, and um, a number of them. So can you give us uh, also, uh, provide the Committee on Electoral Reforms a copy of these logs, uh, Comelec? Uh, yes, sir. We, we can give you the, the copy of the logs. Can we have it now? Do we have it? Uh, can... Wala po, sir, ngayon. But, but I think uh, within the week, sir, we can provide the logs. Tomorrow, we can give it. Uh, the logs that you have and the, the ones that you submitted to Senator Oscudero, are they complete? Good morning, Your Honor. The request of the JCOC was for us to give even just a snapshot of the DNS logs, and that is what we did, Your Honor. But we can provide this committee with a complete log uh, by tomorrow afternoon, sir. So, uh, do I take it that you're saying that uh, the, 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 the ones that you have and that the ones that you submitted to the JCOC are complete? No, sir. Uh, it's just a snapshot, meaning it we just uh, printed several pages. We did Starting not from uh, what date? I am sorry, sir. I could not recall, sir. Mr. Chairman, I, I was expecting Comelec to be to be present today in this hearing, uh, complete with the uh, answers and ammunition. They'll give us in a few days. What will the people think? This is, uh, this is uh, Mr. Senate President. This is what I have gathered uh, from the uh, Secretariat. They submitted logs, but. Starting May 9, 1715, so that means uh, 5 p.m. Uh, 5 p.m. not uh, 5.15 p.m. While uh, the issue is early transmission, the, d the relevant date would be May 8, uh, 2016. So, so it's true that they submitted logs, but it's, it's, not, uh, ab it's not on the relevant date, uh, Mr. San President. All right. So... Um um, it is confirmed that they, the log activities that they have and submitted started only in the afternoon of May 9, 2016, Mr. Chair, if that is uh, what is in our possession. Yes, that, that is what submitted. I see, sir. All right. Now in that case, um, to Comelec and Smartmatic, can you verify the logs that I have in my possession, which are dated May 8 at, and then May 9 a.m.? Early morning of May 9, can you verify these logs? And are these logs uh, logs of the CNTA DNS? Uh, Your Honor, I, I saw the. Director Tolentino. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a copy. Uh, my. <coughs> A resource person that I invited have, uh, have uh, copies of these uh, secure logs, Mr. Chair, and also the lawyer of my source. 
is also here. So in case uh, do, do do we have it? Yeah. So can you verify these logs, uh, Comelec or Smartmart? Attorney Tolentino. Yes. Thank you, sir. So we, we saw that in the, as one of the, in the presentation of the privileged speech, Your Honor. And while it appears to be the same log that we have, we, we still have to verify it. It's, the logs are too too many, sir. It's very voluminous, and uh, we'll just have to verify each and every one. A and if I may be allowed to add, sir, we gave the Senate Electoral Tribunal a complete set of the of the logs because we were subpoenaed. Yes, but uh, you com you submitted the the logs starting May nine. No, sir. For uh, the SET. Ah. For the SET, uh, the it was uh, SET complete, sir. Complete? Yes, sir. <coughs> but that's uh, a separate uh, body from the Senate. Um, you see, Mr. Chair, the logs are footprints of the activities of one system. Now, uh, one example, uh, which is an activity from a certain VCM, transmitting to the Municipal Board of Canvassers, canvassing in consolidating center of Tugaya, Lanao del Sur, at 1.12 a.m. of May 9, prior to the opening of the election. So how can you explain this? And as you said, the early logs that I am showing, sabi ni Mr. Tolentino, the Executive Director Tolentino, too many. Therefore, uh, hindi nakagat tama yung sinabi ng spokesman ninyo na testing transmission. Eh, too many. So the, the logs would contain all the activities done to the VCM. So that would include the testings made, such as the final testing and sealing or the transmission diagnostic tests. And wha final testing and sealing, May 2 to 6, if I'm not mistaken, 2016. Wha when is this transmission yes, sir. diagnostic test? The final testing and sealing provides for that date, sir, up to 6. However, we have also issued COMELEC Resolution 10101, April 26, which provides for the contingency procedures, such that if the BEIs are unable to conduct the FTS during that period, they can still do it even on election day. So they could have done that between 6 and 9. How about the other test? You said the transmission, is that part of FTS? No, the sir. Transmission, the no, so separate. transmission diagnostic test is also under resolution 10057, February 11, which is just to find out if transmission is, uh, <coughs> is okay and that there is a connection between uh, the telcos. Any peri it, any peri it only has a header. It does not contain any results. It only has the ID of the clustered precinct which attempted to transmit. When should that be done? It's on election day, sir. Election day, right? So... On election day, are you sure? Transmission, diagnostic. Ah, yes, uh, former Commissioner Lim. Your Honor, if you look at the FTS procedure compared to 2010 and 2013, no? Uh, in 2010 and 2013, when, when you had an FTS, you didn't have any transmission. One of the innovations in 2016 was it included, because of the low transmission rate in 2013, 
it included a transmission test, and that's part of the FTS, Your Honor. Uh, and it just sends a di data packet containing the header of the precinct, so we will know. But it will not send to the CCS, but to the central server. So it's just a check, but Your Honor, if the at, the at that level of that precinct, it can get connectivity. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, tanong doon kung yes, to, uh, it's allowed in testing. Ilan? Ilan? Ilan beses magte-testing? Isang BCM. Papunta sa sir, uh, Municipal Board of Canvasser. Is, isa lang po, kung until magsabi na nag-succeed siya, so uh, titigil I'm, na po yan. I'm presenting 458 for only one area in Bicol. Ang hinihingi namin, itong secure logs na to, ano laman ito? Ano laman ito mga tinasmit na ito na maaga ng May 8th? What, what is, ano laman? Kung testing transmission yung 458, ano laman? If I may, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, if I, based on the logs, Your Honor, it would appear that the, the logs are just showing that they are searching for an address. No, they're not yet transmitting anything, Your Honor. It's a uh, DNS search, Your Honor. May, may, Mr. Chair, may I uh, request that my resource person be recognized, Attorney Glenn Chong? Go ahead. Yes, sir, good morning and thank you, Mr. Senate President. Um, this, these slides, sir, is actually a comparison between the excerpts from the DNS lo log file as shown by the privileged speech of Senator Soto as compared to excerpts of the log file that was also provided by the Commission on Elections to the Senate Electoral Tribunal, which was obtained by subpoena. So if you will go over that, um, they actually match. It's a perfect match. Uh, the Commission on Elections does not have to go through line by line. Just look at certain sections of that. That one, for example, the, the white one, next slide please, that's a perfect match. The commander can go over there and see word for word, line for line, and see if it is not a match. The black one is yung galing kay Senator Soto, Senate President Soto. The white one is from the SET as subpoenaed, submitted by the Commission on Elections. It's a match. So, ibig pong sabihin, totoo po yung sinabi ni Senator Soto. Next slide, please. That is also a match on another part of the same DNS logs shown by Senator Soto and excerpts from the Comelec provided um, DNS log file. Next slide, please. That one is from Senator, Senate President Soto. Next slide. That one is from the Commission on Elections. They can check it for themselves, letter by letter, word for word, number by number, they match. Next slide, please. That is also from Senator Soto. Next slide, please. That is also from Comelec, the first three and the last three. Now, kanina po, sinabi po ng Comelec ang palusot po nila, and I would like to ask their, your honors, if that is their final answer, that if this, this, these early transmissions are final testing and sealing, is that po the final answer of the Comelec? Mr. Chair, the witness is not supposed to ask questions here. Uh, may I ask that question? Is that uh, really? I am adopting the question. Uh, Thank comment. you, sir. Is it really the final answer? Uh, in the meantime, let me acknowledge now the presence of Senator Binay. She's, she's here with us. Thank you, Senator. Uh, what's, the, what's the answer? Uh, the, the person in charge of the transmission, sir, is Mr. Roderick Ilagan. May I ask him to respond to the question? Sir? Sure, perhaps uh, Mr. Ilagan can Mr. Uh, Ilagan, can please. Sit, uh, we can sit. State also your uh, designation in the... In the and... Uh, 
the secretary will administer the oath to Mr. Ilagan. Kindly raise your right hand. Um, kindly state your name. Uh, I'm Roderick Ilagan. Position and office. Uh, Information Technology Officer of Commission on Election. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Delagan, may you uh, qu uh, answer the query that was, that was posed to us by uh, Attorney Chong? Uh, the query is that, sir, if I may, the query is that whether it is a early <laughs> transmission or an FTS. For us, sir, as based on the logs that we have, that is the query of the FTS, uh, FTS activity because that's the only time the machine is uh, querying to that server, that CCS Filipinas, that's the name of the server, sir. But uh, your diagnostic test, the one is different from the actual transmission, you are? Uh, Section 33 ito nung resolution nyo ba ito o sa ano? FTS, no transmission will be performed. As mentioned... Again, may, 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 ask again, may, may we ask Attorney Chong again for the, the last uh, question you were posing? Uh, sir, I was asking if these early transmissions, last final answer po ng COMELEC is final testing and sealing po ba? I'm only asking for an answer in a Sorry. yes or no, is if it, it is final, final or not. Or is it final testing is and sealing, sealing or something? Secure logs that uh, I presented in my speech. Uh, based on the logs, sir, we I cannot determine if this is a final testing of sealing because it just says a query. It does not say a transmission yet, but a query on the network. So, Tony Chow. Sir, ang, ang ibig ko pong sabihin is pinanindigan po ba ng COMELEC na yung early transmissions are final testing and sealing? Yun lang naman po eh. Kasi ito lang yung sagot nila. That's final, and tes final testing and sealing to explain na merong early transmissions. So I'm asking the COMELEC if that is their final answer po because yes. I'm going to answer them well, also. Obviously, that's the only answer that they could give because... Uh, Mr. Chairman. Hello? Uh, yes. Yes, Pangilinan. <coughs> yes ju just a clarification. Uh, Final testing is different from a query because the final testing, uh, my understanding is a final testing actually means that it has reached the uh, main frame or main computer from the precinct. Tama ba yun? Yun yung final testing. Pero pagka query pa lang, hindi pa siya umaabot sa ano, nagtatanong pa lang siya. Tama ba yun? So these are two different things. The query that you're saying here, uh, Unless it reaches the the headquarters, meaning nakakonek, yun merong final transmission. Pero pag query pa siya, wala pang transmission na nangyayari. Tama ba yun? Tama, sir. So, so sa tanong niyang, ito ba ay final testing, ang sagot mo, kung ito ay umabot sa headquarters at na-transmit, yes, it's final testing. Pero kung ito ay query pa lamang at hindi pa umaabot sa sa headquarters, hindi pa nagtatransmit. Correct, sir. Thank you. Sir, yes, the, the DNS works this way po. The PICOS or the VCM, hindi po niya alam kung kanino po ipapadala yung resulta. Hindi po niya alam kung kanino ipapadala yung resulta. So, pupunta ho siya kay DNS server, which is a domain name system server, which acts as a directory assistance. Nagtatanong po siya, sino po ba ito si Transmission code 1730. Kasi hindi ho alam ni makina, ni VCM, kung kanino ipapadala yung 1730. So, si DNS, ang magsasabi sa kanya, doon mo yan ipapadala sa ganitong munisipyo. Munisipyo A sa probinsya B. So, that's the second step for the machine. What we are looking at is the DNS server log, the first part po. So, ang oh. question po ngayon, bakit may nagtatanong na po sa May 8 pa lang? Ang sagot po ng COMELEC, final testing and sealing yan. Kaya po, 
Gusto ko pong malaman if it is a final answer nila, including Smartmatic, because noticeably Smartmatic is very silent, uh, kasama po sila dyan, because if pinanindigan din na final and testing and sealing po ito, then I will counter them with my next slide, sir. So, um, is it your final testing uh, and sealing? These uh, uh, queries, these uh, transmissions, queries as um, pointed out by Senator Pangilinan? Good morning, sir. Uh, I believe these are final testing and sealing or diagnostic transmission results. The only way to assure that is to look at the logs of the VCMs because as it's been stated, these are logs of the DNS and it does not show any type of result being transmitted, sir. Sir? Yes, Attorney John. That's exactly what I want to hear. Next slide, please. Yung FTS counter argument. Before that, uh, Mr. Chair, may I know where the witness, Attorney Chong, is getting all of this data? Uh, sir, that's from the SET po. From the? Uh, Senate Electoral Tribunal. Ah, because this it was, was subpoenaed, sir. Subpoenaed. Yes, these sir. are the records subpoenaed. Uh, by the SET from the Commonwealth yes, and submitted. Sir. So yes, these sir. are records from the SET. Yes, sir. P public records na po yan, sir. Thank you. A FTS counter argument. Sir, malina po, let me restate sinabi po ni Smartmatic. We have to look at the audit logs to find out if it is a final testing and sealing or it is a diagnostic, diagnostic test. Um, hindi po. Ah, yan. Are not FTS. Uh, no, no. Previous. Uh, ito po, yan, 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 yan. Uh, is that the first slide po? Uh, sir, okay. The early transmissions are not FTS. This is what I want to show to the, to the honorable senators. Next slide, please. That is, the, the black one is from Senator Soto. It says excerpts from the DNS logs of SP Soto III. Then you compare that one with the excerpts from the DNS log file of the COMELEC as provided to the Senate Electoral Tribunal. They are match. Um, transmission code 1730 refers to the municipality of Ragay, Camarini Sur. Next slide, please. Ito po yun, ang transmission code 1730 sa kay Senator Soto. Then the next one, press, one, press po. 1730 also in the COMELEC log. Next slide, please. That is a list of all the audit logs. As uh, Smartmatic is telling us, Your Honor, they all bear the code 1730. So, iniisa-isa ko po yan. I spent several hours going over each of those audit logs. Next slide, please. It looks like that. That is the audit log, the record of all events, transactions, occurrences within the computer, within the VCM that is recorded in detail by the machine. So, isa-isahin po natin, Your Honor, please, please po, makikita po natin that the system was shutting down on May 5. Then, it was restarted on May 9. There was no transaction on May 8. Next slide, please. I'm showing you 10 examples out of 62 precincts, but I have already examined them. Isa-isa po, wala pong May 8. There was no transaction whatsoever on May 8. It's all May 5. All testing and sealing occurred on May 5. And then the next time that the machine was switched on, it was already May 9. Wala pong May, 9 wala pong May 8 yan. Therefore, that's why I was asking if this is a final answer of the Comelec and Smartmatic. And Smartmatic already said na dyan makikita sa audit log. And the audit log shows walang transmission. Walang buhay na makina in Ragay Camarini Sur on May 8. So, Next slide. Ano nangyari dito? Smartmatic and Comelec. Ano nangyari? Uh, uh, before you answer, uh, Attorney Chong. Yes, sir. Uh, so you did. So from from the log in the DNS you got a code which led you to the municipality of Ragai. Ragai so Camarillo, yes, sir. But it did not give you the specific VCM. Which no, sir. 
So you analyzed everything. How many BCMs 62. in our guys? 62. 62, yes, You sir. analyze all yes. the logs? Yes, I look for every one of them. Yeah. So that's all why I'm all. so intense. You're saying yes. all, huh? Yes, all. all. And then, yeah, pattern. May 5, May shut, 5, shut May down, 9. May 9. Yes, sir. Reboot. Okay. I'm showing sure. 10 yeah. examples. Just for... Okay. You just showed 10 examples, yes, but I you examined 62. Yes, sir. Okay, that's clear. So we need an explanation kung ganun. Yeah. Uh, kasi, kasi sabi nila, it's a final answer, final testing and sealing, and it's their final answer. Now, we can show, okay. walang makinang buhay, umi eight. Now, okay, sino ang nag sino ang nagtransmit niyan? Nasusundan na kita ha. Yes, okay, sir. Ko na Next you, slide, you please. No, Next let, slide, let please. Let us, the Senate President has a question to the Comelec to answer. Uh, Next okay. slide, please. Okay, who can answer, please? Di ba may tanong ka? May tanong ka? Ah. Yes. Sino yung, sino yung nagpadala ng transmission ng May 8? Sir, Eight, yes. Sir, may we be allowed to verify all the statements because uh, Attorney Chong says there is no transmission on May 8, but the Senate President says there is? No, yes. So who? That's why we're asking who. That's why, sir. So oh. may we be allowed to verify first? Because I, I think the most important thing here, Your Honors, is to find out were the transmissions or did the transmission send any result to the CCS? All right. But let me, Mr. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Executive Director, let me cut you there. No. I, I, I need to place info, uh, into the records also uh, some uh, information that I gathered and you can verify later on. And, uh, it seems that you will have to do a lot of investigation here. Uh, there are allegations that there were fake or cloned machines that was used in 2016. And these were the ones that were transmitting. Oh, merong ganong claim. No, I'm not saying that I, 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 I that, that comes from me. Uh, kaya siguro baka may, ma may sasagot kayo kung saan ang galing yung mga transmissions ng May 8. Okay, sir. Uh, we, we, we will verify that allegation, sir. All right. Uh, 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 I'll accept that for now. Uh, now, yes, uh, another point more. Before I move on to another uh, point, uh, Tony Chong, yes. Yes, Your Honor, I would just like to place this in the right perspective, sinabi po ni Executive Director Tolentino, uh, the issue is kung may pumasok ko na resulta, that's wrong. The issue here is, bakit may nagtatransmit when there is supposed to be no transmission at all on those days? Yun po, mali na po yung labag sa batas. Labag po yun sa protocols nila. It's not about whether may boats na pumasok ko, hindi. Ang, ang question is, may nag-attempt, may nag whether it's an attempt or not, it is already a violation, Your Honor. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just want to be clarified. Uh, late transmissions are illegal. I, is that what you're saying? Uh, that any or early? Sorry. There is a period of transmission allowed. May my, my understanding is the testing is May two to six. May two to six, janan testing. So may mga may mga testing transmission yan. Beyond that, nahuli. Ibig sabihin, malat, lumampas na ng May 6, ibig sabihin, hindi na pumasok doon sa deadline, so late. Yung bang late na yun, ang hirap, yung late dahil lampas na sa May 6, illegal ba yun? Hindi, hindi ba, allowed, allowed siya ng Comilic Reso 10101, di ba? Tama Ay, po ba yan? Kasi ang ah, that is against the law. Uh, yung lumampas sa May 6, Tama ba yun? Against the law ba yun? Kasi, no, no sir. Po, yeah. Parang, bakit ka pa nagtatransmit kung tapos na yung transmission period? Di ba? Dapat wala nang transmission. Uh, tama? O, oh, eh, bakit merong mga transmission ng May, May, May 8? 
Uh, yun, di illegal yun. Uh, yung, yung ba yung sinasabi uh, mo, sige, that's against uh, the law? No, sir. Uh, with respect to final testing and sealing that exceeds beyond May 6, hindi siya illegal. What I'm trying to point out is that when you cannot trace any particular machine as having actually sent it, that becomes illegal because you cannot pinpoint anymore. Eh. Uh, these are not legitimate machines. The ones that is producing this in Ragay in particular is not a legitimate one because all the 62 were testing and sealing on May 5. There was no transaction whatsoever on May 8. They went back alive only on May 9 in the morning. But, but the DNS log, the directory service that they had used, may natanggap no siyang may, query no may. on May 8. Mm. On May 8, na nagtatanong, sino po ito si 1730? So that, that's make it illegal and questionable. Highly questionable, Your Honor. That's my point, sir. And besides, sir, yung sinasabi po nilang testing na transmission, sir, if you will look at the audit logs, wala hong, merong mga nag a po ng transmission, pero most of them, hindi po talaga transmission, testing lang po ng signal. So as mentioned by Conelec, there are, uh, and you allowed it, uh, testing and transmissions even before May 9. Diba, May 8, uh, pinayagan na, pinayagan yan, no, to, to testing transmissions. So, kasama sa mga inihiling namin sa inyo, may we, na ask, may we now ask you to submit to us copies of uh, municipalities who conducted FTS or testing transmissions uh, uh, in the wee hours of May 8 and May 9. May mga nag-conduct, di ba? So, submit nyo sa amin. Sino-sino yung mga nag-conduct na yan? Um, so, with that, uh, may I move on to another topic of my privilege speech? Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Drilan? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, may I address this question to the Comelec? Uh, uh, Attorney Chong said that he got this record from the, S from the records of the Comelec as subpoenaed by the SET. Uh, now, is that, uh, th that's, that's uh, on the record. Now, was the uh, logs from uh, Ragai Camarines so submitted to the SET? To this uh, SET, huh? Was it? Yes, sir, complete, sir. No, no, what it was submitted to the Senate Electoral Tribunal or to the Presidential Electoral Tribunal? To the SET, Your Honor. To the SET? We were issued a subpoena. Why to the set? Was that part of the protest with to, of Tolentino to, uh, uh, regarding... Yes, uh, sir. Tolentino and the Lima, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, Your Honor, if I may. Attorney uh, 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 Lim. I think when uh, Attorney Chong was pointing out the logs, he just said that one half of that part came from the SEC. No, I don't know where the other half came from. He said to compare the two, and it will match. So maybe if we can ask Attorney Chong where the other half came okay, from. Okay, can you respond to that, uh, Attorney Chong? Uh, sir, he may have not understood me, or he was not listening to me. Okay, okay. I was referring Please, to well, Mr. Yes, sir. Chong, I'm sorry. stop the insults, yes, all right? Sir. Only senators are allowed to insult here. The, what I'm referring to... <laughs> Thank not you, sir. A, Thank not you. a witness, okay? Wha what, what I'm trying to point out is that the DNS... That's only one half. That's what I'm, I'm showing here, sir. The other half would be, you may look at the audit logs, which will complete the entire picture. That's what I meant, sir. Hindi ho yung, na, hindi ho yung literally hinati ko yung log this, pinakita ko yung half at hindi naman yung the other half. No, what I'm referring to is the different well, systems. I guess questions are raised here because you are known to be the counsel of, uh, uh, of uh, Bong Bong Marcos, no, sir. and therefore, your no, views sir. here might be... Uh, well, one For the record, sir, I don't... N are you I'm not the counsel of no, Bongbong Bong Marcos? But no, you have sir. represented Bongbong Bong Marcos in the proceedings before the PET. No, sir. Oh, no, come sir. on. No, you, sir. Honestly. You, I have here a letter of, uh, of uh, uh, Attorney Garcia, counsel for uh, Mr. Marcos, who mentions you as one of the representatives, alternate representative. This is a letter uh, sir. addressed to the Comelec. On March 17, 2017. Uh, sir, they can review the logs there of the CCTV if they have found my soul there. Wala po ako doon, sir. It, it, my name was just there, but I never, never oh went yeah. there. I'm looking at yes, sir. I'm not denying that. It may be, it may be there, but I never went to the SET. Not uh, uh, PET. No, but, but PET. Yes, I did, not I did say that you, go, that you went to the SET. I'm just saying that you are nominated as a representative of, 
of uh, Bongbong. I may have been nominated, but I didn't accept the nomination, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at any rate, ganito, no? The claim of Attorney Chong is that uh, he, the, the, the uh, data in his uh, PowerPoint came from submissions to the set by the COMELEC of the uh, logs of the DNS. You will have time to double check his statement. If he is found to be not accurate or misleading as we will sanction him. Kaya may time po kayo. Kaya al alam ni Atty. Chong yun. So malakas ang loob niya. So you will have time. When you go, go back to the office to double check, uh, kayang-kaya niyo double check yun. Ang dali. May, may 8, may oras pa. 5 p.m. ya tayo or something like, like that. Okay? Then you tell us kung, kung mali o hindi. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay. Just to complete the picture, right? Because uh, it might be uh, misinterpreted by others. Atty. Chong is just an invited resource person here. He was not my source. My source is being represented by Attorney Baligod. And if necessary, I will present him if necessary. But the, uh, uh, just to make, baka akala kasi ng mga na, 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 nakinig ng privilege speech ko at saka nitong mga nangyayari ngayon, eh si Attorney Chong yung source ko nito mga ito. Hindi, ang source ko saksa ka ng lalim, hindi nyo kayang baligtarin. Uh, Sigurado ko, kaya alam ko yung sabit nyo. Attorney Baligod, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Senate President. I am uh, representing two potential material witnesses who can prove the allegations made by uh, Senator Senate President Soto in his twin speeches. Basically, the three material allegations they can, that they can prove are the following. First, that uh, there was a queue server used which was unauthorized and which was malicious. It was unauthorized because it was not included in the transmission diagram presented or submitted by Smartmatic to Comelec and which the Comelec approved. Second, this Q server, uh, the, the source code of the Q server was not subjected to review. And third, this Q server was responsible in unbundling transmission packages. Huh? Um, number four, it was used as a gateway in the transmission of results. And lastly, it was heavily used only on May 10 to 11, 2016. So let me give a brief uh, explanation, uh, Your Honor, on why it is important to look into this deeper. Um, Good. Just a uh, parliamentary inquiry. Uh, are, should not the witnesses of the lawyer, rather than the lawyer, be speaking here? Uh, um, we have a, a rule that only resource persons can speak and that they be assisted by counsel. Right now, we have counsel speaking and uh, without the witnesses. Uh, how, how, does, how do we go about this, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, um, Attorney Baligod is here to explain, just to explain, uh, he is explaining why he is here. He is saying that he is representing the, uh, my source, uh, my source, and uh, it, it is, he is placing on record uh, what my source uh, is saying. Uh, mm. may, may, may I, Your Honor? I, I will allow you to continue. You're summarizing what the witnesses will actually explain. And, 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 and we know that you are not testifying yes. on your own personal knowledge. Yes. Alam na namin yun. So I, we will now know what weight we will give to your, to your uh, statements because you are not the person who has uh, personal knowledge. Yes. Okay. So at least with that, with that, uh, ano siguro, with that uh, caveat, I will allow you. Yes. Okay. Please yes. go ahead. And yes. just one more thing, you know. The reason that I wanted him recognized is because there are people who are thinking that Attorney Chong is my source. He's not. 
I have nothing to do with him. I am... Uh, may I, Your Honor? Uh, your Honors, I am just giving the committee a glimpse on what these witnesses can share to the committee in furtherance of its uh, investigation. Attorney Billy could just be direct to the point because uh, uh, you're just summarizing uh, what, what you understood from what they have told you. Sige, yes, Your, uh, your Honor. Thank you. So they can uh, testify on the irregularities with regard to the unauthorized uh, Q server used during the elections. That's one. Second, they can prove on the fact of early transmission. Uh, kanina po, pinag-aawayan ni Senator Pangilinan sa kasi Ator ni Glenn Chong yung, uh, yung logs. Ang punto po dito ay... Uh, Clarification lang, hindi ho kami nag-aaway. Uh, uh, Pinag-uusapan. Pinag uh, sige po. Uh, ang sinasabi po ng witnesses, merong doon sa lag ng central server, may nakareflect na transmission ng isang VCM na isa doon ay na-recognize from Ragay. Pero pag titingnan nyo yung lag ng VCM sa Ragay, wala pong transmission. So sino po ang nagka-query doon sa central server kung hindi yung VCM na yon? Kaya po lumalabas yung sinasabing there were clone machines used. Uh, pangatlo po yung foreign access to our uh, system. May prove po nila that there is a foreign-based computer machine that is able to access our system. And this foreign-based machine has the access privilege of a root. Ibig po sabihin yata sa lengguahe ng mga IT experts, pag root ang uh, access privilege mo, kaya mong gawin ang kahit ano doon sa system. No? And... Uh, Kaya po hindi nakarating yung mga witnesses ngayon ay they are bound to a contractual uh, obligation prohibiting them to disclose any information. But I believe that if they are subjected to the compulsory processes of the Senate, they will be able to share the information that they know. And they are credible and knowledgeable, your honors, because they were part of the group that developed the, the software and the operation of the software itself. Thank you, Your Honors. All right. So, Mr. Chair, uh, with that, uh, uh, may I move on to the next uh, topic because it was already mentioned by Attorney Baligod uh, <coughs> in my privileged speech. Uh, that is the, and it is relative to the early transmissions. Um, the, the Comelec server was also being accessed ano, as uh, we presented every minute prior, during, and after the elections by a username E360 Sync. So, uh, were you aware of this intrusion, um, Comelec? Uh, Your Honor, uh, yes, we are, and we know for a fact that E360 is not a person but a logical user. It is a software, it's a running in the background, and no, no one is trying to use it. I mean, a person is not, there is no interactive user on that. It's just a, a daemon. Uh, it, it's a processor. It's a process which has a specific uh, in at specific intervals, it will be asked by the software to to push results to the to our website. All right. W what we Di used, but Director Jimenez said uh, in an interview in Balitang Hali. Uh, quote: "Ginawa natin yan nung 2013. Ginawa yan nung 2010." Yan, dumadaan yan sa foreign servers kasi ang website natin, I think, they are both in Amazon. Period. Yan sabi niya. So, did that happen? Yes. At alam natin yan. At hindi ibig sabihin mali yan. End of quote. Now, so you're aware of that. And it's confirmed by uh, Director Jimenez. Um, 
Is there an end bank resolution of COMELEC allowing foreign access? The terms of reference for the for the AES, Your Honor, includes the provision of a secure platform. And one of the most secure platforms available would be the Amazon Web Service, which, in fact, even the DICT and the Bureau of Customs subscribe to them. So yeah. you, uh, you allow this and you have an NBank resolution allowing it? Uh, it? The terms of preference, Your Honor, was uh, approved by the Commission NBank. There was no specific statement that it should be in Amazon, but what was required was to provide a, a security secured platform where we can uh, push the re results to our public website. So my question then is um, the Comelec website servers are here in the country. They were here, somewhere in the BGC, Tagig. And you had a backup center contracted from Globe. How come uh, Komelek is saying that uh, election website is being hosted by an outside uh, uh, country, uh, outside of the country? Uh, Your Honor, our uh, director for the Information Technology Department, Jeannie Florita, would respond to that, sir if we may be allowed to do. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, uh, uh, have you taken your oath? Not yet. Uh, sec uh, Madam Secretary, please. Siguro, lahat na lang ng COMELEC dyan. Pati na si Director Jimenez, tayo na rin po. Kung sino pa potential source of information. All directors of the COMELEC have not taken their oath. Please uh, rise and take your oath. Kindly raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Thank you. Um, good so, so why do we need, uh, when you were operating in uh, BGC, your website servers I were here in the country, somewhere in BGC, Tagig? Uh, um, good morning, Your Honors. The central server located in the DICT is, is not the website server, sir. It's a central server containing the results received from the VCM and CCS. Um, the website server, which is um, hosted in Amazon, is another server. The central server pushes votes to the website, and the website publish it through the Philippines 2016. It's a, di a different servers, Your Honor. Why was it uh, accessing? Why was it accessing? Uh, because Before May 9? E366 was accessing. From, from May 8, May 9, until May 10, and May 11. Um, oh. I, Your Honor, we have two different, um, two different users in the central server. One is the E360 sync, and the other is E360. E360 is a user that uh, push uh, results to the NTSC, which is already activated on May 9. That that user is used to um, verify the, the transmission of the BCMs and the CCS. And the 360 sync is the one used to, to push the results to the website. And um, that website will only uh, publish on the election day. Attorney Jong, you have a reaction to that? Uh, Your Honor, Attorney Baligod cannot speak. For the resource person. Your Honor, uh, Attorney Baligod is showing me excerpts of the of the activities of uh, E three sixty sync, which I believe was also in your in your privilege speech. Uh, sinabi ho ni Director Florita na 
uh, E365 was used to push results on May 9. To the website. To the website yes. on May 9. After the voting has already, after the voting process has already concluded. Um, and that's only from six, five o'clock in the afternoon of May 9 until forward. Di po ba? Okay. But sir, E360 sync was already alive as of May 8, 7, 19, 01 in the morning. Yes, but it could be a test. But it, so it, it doesn't um, push results. Uh, ano so yun, Mr. Chairman, kaya ako ang ina-nervyos lalo. Ang mga sagot sa atin, eh, it could be. Hindi direct eh. Hindi siguradong sagot ninyo sa amin eh. Ayun, nakakatakot eh. Um, uh, Smartmatic. Mr. Moreno, please. Sir, the user E360 Sync will work actually before because it's pushing the data. It's an automatic push. And it is pushing the data even from the FTS or the diagnostic transmission test. That is why it's configured from before. And from before, it is pushing the data. So let me just try to elaborate a bit more. When you say data, there. that does not necessarily mean votes. No, no, it's definitely not votes, sir. It's actually the result what is, it? what is it? What is it? What are they pushing? If it's it not votes. Sure. It is the results of the transmission so that the National Support Center and the website will know what is the result of the transmission, but it's not the actual vote, sir. In other words, you want to know if you can, uh, uh, before you transmit the votes, you want to know if you can actually connect with, with uh, BGC, Tama Bayon, and therefore you do a test. So yes, when you sir. do a test, there are no votes being transmitted. That's correct, sir. And as part of the, the, the monitoring of the National Support Center, they are monitoring also that diagnostic test. So that's why during the whole period of the final testing and sealing and after, they receive that push or that information in the National Support Center. There is no, by the way, just for the record, sir, there is no access of a foreign entity or a foreign server. It's a user that is inside of the data center sending that information to the Amazon website. Um, Mr. Chen, may, may uh, Attorney Chong? Attorney, Attorney Chong. Sir, uh, Mr. Moreno said that final testing and sealing and diagnostic tests, the data is pushed to the server. Eh, meron hong sampung boto doon sa final testing and sealing. They actually insert 10 ballots. When they transmit, there's actually a result with those 10 ballots, 10 tests ballot. So does it mean that with this E360 sync pushing results to the website, you're also polluting the website with results from the F FTS? Well, these kind of questions that uh, we are getting also from our resource persons, Mr. Chair, would be very uh, helpful for us no? uh, when we discuss again uh, the, the probability of uh, having a different type of elections in 2019. Uh, next year, and perhaps, and definitely in 2022. This can never happen again. Pag sabihin na natin, ano, magulo eh. Nalilito kami. Hindi masyadong maraming butas eh. Masyadong maraming hindi masagot eh. Maraming perhaps, maraming maybe, maraming could be. Uh, Tony Chong, yes. Uh, sir, one of the th other thing that I, I saw in the web, in, in the privileged speech po ninyo, sir, is yung the E360 sync ran a script, uh, a shell script, one day before the elections, uh, which activity is actually characterized as malicious and uh, considered a critical intrusion to a computer system such that if you have a firewall, it would have alerted you. So that the, uh, what I'm saying is that this, this access, this, this running a shell script is actually a critical intrusion to the system that was run or operated by E360 Sync. I'm just stating this for the record, Your Honors. Okay, well, okay, can you explain that? Yes. Mr. Mr. Moreno will explain. Yeah. Sorry, I, I would like to request for to repeat the question. Uh, Attorney Chong, uh, ask the specific question uh, about the script, E360 Sync script. Um, according to this uh, slide presentation, Your Honor, 
um, E360 sync ran a shell script um, one day before the elections, that would be May 8. Uh, hindi ko lang po makita yung date and time. Uh, the root, user root is, yung parang, ah, the date is May 8, 7.22 in the morning uh, using the BDNS and then with root uh, powers. And to say godlike powers. You can change anything because y it's in God mode. Kung laro lang po ito, sir, God mode yung cheating mode mo dun. Uh, if if, uh, if Ms. Moreno can react to the said the statement. Yeah. Well, I, I think that the statement is partially Tagalog. So my understanding is that E360 was cheating. And the answer is no, definitely not. Uh, E360 is just pushing the information and the information that is being pushed is for monitoring purposes of the National Support Center and for the results website that is hosted in the Amazon website. Uh, regarding the script or the shell sc script with the root powers, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Um, if you can submit that information, we'll take a look and explain the community why is it that it was running that specific script. Sir. was another point being raised about 10 votes being uh, transmitted. Uh, would you care to clarify that? If I may. The standard procedure for any FTS is that you have 10 votes no, for national and local. But in the case of the transmission test as part of the FTS, it did not transmit the 10 votes. No, It just transmitted a data packet containing the header of the precinct so that the central server will know that this uh, precinct uh, has undergone an FTS and has connectivity. No, so, wala, hindi po kasama yung 10 votes sa uh, transmit po. Doon sa, sa, sa BEI, ang nagche-check lang ng result ng 10 votes kung yes, accurate. Yes, oh, opo. Oh, ah. Bale, hindi lang, hmm. ano, electronic, your honor, binamanually tally din nila po. Okay, so. Uh, Attorney Cho, we'll, we'll uh, allow the other resource persons to uh, give us their, their inputs. Or, ano, ladies first muna. Uh, si Ms. Akol of the AES Watch. Actually, all of these problems would not have been incurred if we just followed the law. When we were co uh, drafting, the, drafting the 9369, we placed safeguards in the law that should have been followed. So there have been many technical violations of the law that was committed in tw as early as 2010, 2013, and 2016. I can list them all if you want to, but that will take too long because in writing yes yes so that is why even on the servers alone they should all have been had, they should have all undergone a systems test and a source code review however that did not happen that's why you can have fake vcms that can be transmitting because they were not really in the final testing and sealing it was not really covered okay therefore we're saying that all of these problems you will only be able to Take a look at it after the fact. It has been done. And since elections, uh, automated elections, is very fast, everybody's already proclaimed. Nobody's going to touch anymore the results. However, now, because there are some questions that are being done, and we really think that we should not anymore adopt the same system for 2019, otherwise you'll have problems like this. Uh, thank you, Your Honors. Uh, Everybody is aware that Smartmatic has been the provider of the Philippine elections in 2010, 2013, and again in 2016. And the ones that being raised by Attorney Glenn Chong, and especially raised by the privileged speech by uh, Senator Soto, having that uh, suspicion of uh, transmission on dated May 8, what raises the issues is, is this vendor qualified? Do they have the competency? Because otherwise, if they had did perform in 2010 and they did encounter such failures, as a professional supplier, you should have noticed that and made the corrections in 2013. And then if you were again uh, contracted as the vendor for 2013, the error should be lesser. And then more so now in 2016 that they're already more seasoned in understanding the quirks of the system, they should be more competent in understanding this. So the May 8 itself is a telling story that they should have done the testing way before May 8 to prove to us, to the public for that matter, that they are the more reliable supplier. 
But while, while it's evident that uh, being presented here with all the audit logs, that uh, it seems that we're back to square one over and over again, especially in 2016, how are we going to be sure that come 2019, we'll encounter another set of problems that is just complicating this issue? And concurring with my colleague here with Ms. Morikol, if they just followed the law, then we wouldn't have these this problems. What we are dealing now are not related to the law, but related to the uh, commonly issued memorandum circulars, which by, by law they already give it that authority, and that make it makes things more technically difficult to understand. Thank you, Your Honors. Ms. Bettina Kimson uh, is recognized here. Um, sir, thank you. Um, with regards to Amazon, I worked at the ICT. I know Mr. George Tardia there quite well um, previously and um, for before the 2016 elections, and I was with the Comlec Advisory Council before that. Um, just to be clear, the DICT has very strong rulings on using Amazon. In other words, um, in data as such as the election data is very, very critical information, and the DICT frowns on any such data going abroad. So I don't know how it happened that Amazon was permitted to host this. That's why there are servers in the DICT, sir. And we get the uh, inputs or reaction of Mr. George Tardo, or IC Director of Cybersecurity uh, Bureau of the ICT. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senate President Soto. Uh, in fact, uh, Ms. Bettina Kemsen is very uh, right. We the DICT is very much uh, strict on the, we have uh, very strict procedures, parameters on, uh, for example, uh, selecting uh, Amazon or any uh, uh, provider, especially for this uh, 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 security, uh, sec uh, security uh, services. Now, uh, we have this uh, service, we are hosting a lot of government agencies and a lot of uh, uh, security parameters are, are being uh, uh, in place, are, are in place such that it will not happen. Now, the, uh, as I understand, uh, the Comilic has their own uh, uh, system. So, yes, uh, they are with the DICT server, but uh, we don't have uh, any, any uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, any uh, control whether they have their, uh, they use the, the Amazon and their system of this or their data. Okay, I think uh, the committee has its hands, hands full on these uh, two major issues already, and uh, we will await the submissions uh, that we have asked. No, but uh, uh, if I, unless there is any other point on this matter, I would like to move on to the, 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 uh, the last uh, issue. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah. Tito Lentino. Sir, uh, Mr. Yes, sir. Yung clarification lang, sir, on the instructions given by the Senate President for Comelec to submit the list of municipalities that conducted FTS beyond May 6. We can do that, Your Honor, through the, the BCM logs. However, there is a precautionary protection order over those logs issued by the PET. So we'll have to secure authority first for us to look at it. And because of that, I also don't know where Attorney Chong got his, the logs that he showed here on the screen. That's why I mentioned earlier that we have to verify the presentations made. Well, what is the tenor of the order of the pet? No, you are not supposed to what? To secure and protect all uh, BCMs, uh, SD cards, uh, data storage devices, and documents used in the elections. And, and looking at logs is violative of the order? Uh, it's covered, Your Honor. Y uh, Attorney Chong. Your Honor, it is not only the audit logs that is the, the basis for the determination of when the final testing and seeding occurred. They can also look at the minutes of voting. Meron silang kopya niyan, Your Honor. They can actually look nandun ho when was the, the final testing and seeding conducted. Your Comelec Reso does not 
instruct the BEI to inform COMELEC that we conducted FTS beyond the normal period of May 2 to 6. Wala kayong order na ganun? Basta you just gave them authority na you can, no, do, you can do FTS beyond uh, May 6. Ganun lang. They uh, state that fact in the minutes of voting. But I don't know if the BEI is did it, Your Honor. But no. minutes of voting, may, kung May 9 ginawa. No, Tama? sir. Pwede namang i... Meron siyang... Uh, parang activities prior. Pwede ilagay, Pwede ilagay doon. No. Now, yung audit log, sir, they are contained in the SD cards. So, it's the SD card which is under PPO. Mr. Chair, Attorney Donato wishes to be Attorney there. Donato of the uh, Tangulang Democracia. Good morning. Uh, same, same group as Attorney Chong, no? Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honors. Um, our NGO is uh, for clean elections. I believe I was invited here because uh, in 2010, we already encountered incidents of uh, transmissions, questionable transmissions. You have an audit log saying that the machine closed, but three hours later, the municipal log says it received. So it's, uh, that's 2010. Now it's 2016. We continue to receive the same problems. So for us, we are, me, I'm non-IT. Many people here are non-IT. There's only one thing in my mind, in our minds, huh? where the votes changed. That's the bottom line here, where the votes changed. And there's only one way to answer that. They call it digital forensics. And uh, fortunately for us, the Philippine government has expertise on that, PNP, NBI, uh, DICT. So if that, that's what we would like to bring up, Your Honor, if the body can consider that. Uh, for example, the, we have a filed a criminal case pending since 2011. It was still with CIDG, now with ACG. It's still pending, uh, lack of uh, access. Uh, if the body can subpoena what needs to be subpoenaed, maybe that can be done, Your Honors. That's all, Your Honors. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Barrios, please. I would like to comment in uh, support of the suggestion na uh, pag-aralan natin ang NU system. Uh, the Smartmatic system is a defective system. It is, a, it is not a viable system. Uh, all systems must have users or masters, no? Um, this is a system without a master. It's an autonomous system. The voter is not a master of the system. Taga-input lang siya ng balot. It does not control the system. No one controls the system. I would suggest, sir, na take a look at other systems, but do it properly. Define first the user of the system. Parang the system will be designed for the user. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that input. Yes, uh, Senate President. Yeah, th thank you. Well, Mr. Chair, I, I think uh, your committee can uh, study the moves done by other countries now. Uh, merong ang Bumalik sa Manmal eh. Germany <coughs> went back to Manmal. Perhaps what we can do is uh, look at the possibility of uh, a hybrid. Manmal ang botohan, transmission ang uh, mabilis, then uh, it'll be safer. Ang dayahan sa Manmal sa baba, barya-barya. Barya-barya ang dayahan, barangay-barangay, mga presi-presinto lang. Itong computerized, wholesale. Before election pa lang, may boto na. Samantalang yung manual, wala, hindi pwede. Hindi ba? Eh, kukunti lang yun. Anyway, let me I move on to uh, another. If we will allow Senate Sen President the Council of Sm uh, Smartmatic now also to, to speak. Kasi. Attorney Lesatin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since uh, the automated election system has been adopted in 2010, there have been several protests, both at the House of uh, <coughs> the HRET, RTC that were appealed to the COMELEC, and all of them were appealed to the Supreme Court. Your Honours, up to now, I have yet to read a decision of the Supreme Court 
core of the COMELEC or RTC or the HREP that said that the automated election system provided by Smartmatic did not count correctly. The random manual audit conducted by the PPCRB again confirms that it is accurate. Your Honor, all of this, if there were defects or there were cheating at this point in time, there would have been some evidence. All of our being raised are doubts, but never a concrete evidence. Your Honors, the ERs, the machines printed almost 2,700,000, Your Honor, because 30 copies of the ERs per precinct, and there are more than 2,700,000, and yet we have yet to see one ER that was transmitted, and somehow when it was counted, it changed. None has been detected, Your Honor. None has been presented. All of these questions that are being raised raises doubts, but never a concrete evidence to show that the voting change or there was some cheating. Your Honor, may I also just add, the data that's being stored, the data that's being transmitted are all encrypted. The encryption that's being used is twice that being used by the banks. Your Honor, even if it is stored in Amazon, it is still encrypted. And any change just by one digit or one comma, it, you will see it. Your Honor, if there is a, any accusation that the, there is some malware, by this time, Your Honor, the source code review should have, uh, <coughs> should have uh, exposed it, Your Honor, either pre or after. There is none. Thank you for the input. Uh, 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 let us not debate any more the merits yeah. and demerits of the system. Uh, no, I, 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 may, may I just, I, yes, uh, Mr. President. Chairman, President. because, uh, yes, um, uh, I just recalled something when binanggit niya Tony last din yung maliit na bahay. Yung enya, ganyan-ganyan yung inenya nyo eh. Oh. Anyway, um, there was a big howl from the per people there when Tony Lasatin was uh, speaking. Uh, may I know why? Tony, Tony Chong? Your Honor, people versus, ano, Pilais versus Radasa. This is a protest uh, pending before the Comelec before in 2013. Uh, in which the di digital lines, na lahat ho ng boto doon from senators down to councillors, nagkawindang-windang po. And I have been proving this before the previous JCOC hearings. Kitang-kita po yan ni Senator, the chairman of this committee, Your Honor, kitang-kita po yan by the thousands po, tat dalawang libo, tatlong libo, because mali po ang nilabas na election returns, mali po ang manual na bilang. Pilais versus Rada sa Comilex Second Division. Now, aside from that, sir, if you will give me the time, I will also show proof that the decrypted ballot images are not faithful reproductions of the paper ballot. To prove na hindi ho tama yung sinasabi ni Attorney Lasatin, na meron talagang pagkakamali. Example, yung balota po from Lanao del Sur, Lanao del Norte. May pirma po ang BEI sa original na paper ballot. Pagdating po sa decrypted ballot image, malinis po, walang pirma ang BEI. I can show it, Your Honor, if you will, if you will grant me. Um, uh, uh, slide, uh, please. No, just, uh, just show us that uh, one uh, point. Uh, no, it's not, this is not favoring any candidate. Yes, sir. Uh, besides, uh, uh, that's in Lanao, sir. Um, that would be tampered, decrypted ballot images so it, 2016. It, uh, disproves what Attorney Lasatin is saying. Uh, yes, sir. Accurate na accurate sila. Yes, sir. We okay, will disprove okay. that, sir. Uh, show what? Well, actually, Mr. San President, Attorney Chong, I think even the random manual audit did not say 100%. Eh? Ang gusto lang siguro sabihin ni Attorney Lasatin, within a tolerable uh, limit, yun, eh, eh, no, nobody claims 100% din your random manual audit. Sir, um, if we will look at the random manual audit, sir, in 2010, the, the, the extrapolated errors po is 4.5 million votes. In 2013, bumaba po to around 300,000 votes. In 2016, it's 1.6 million 
wrongly counted votes as extrapolated based on the results of the RMA. That is not acceptable, Your Honor. Go ahead, go ahead, Attorney Chong. Yes, sir. That is 2013, pero later na lang ho, kasi kung may sagot lang ko, Smartmatic, yun ang gagamitin ko. Yung 2016 po. 2016? May trap pa po ako. Tingnan po natin sagot nila. Sir, yeah. Eh, gusto ko lang po yung pangalaya. Okay, that's 2016. Yes, sir, that's it. Alam namin may sabit. Okay, yes, sir. Weakness. Go. Okay, press, press, please. That the one on the upper left is a photocopy of the paper ballot, the physical paper ballot, Your Honor. I don't know if you can see it, sir, but if you can actually look at the original, meron ho siyang oval. Napipick up po ng photocopier, the lowly, humble photocopier, napipick up po yung oval uh, sa, gitna, sa tabi po ng pangalan ng kandidato. The lower right, Your Honor, is the decrypted, printed decrypted ballot image. Next slide, please. Ito po yung difference at similarities po nila. Yung similarities, yung sa top, is the same ballot precinct number at the bottom. So pareho po yan. The original, foot as photocopied in the S80 again. And ito po yung sa baba, decrypted ballot image. Now look at the difference. May, ang original may pirma. Ang ballot image, wala po. Malinis po. Now, the other one is, yung boto po dun sa taas, wala pong square. Pero sa baba, may square na po. There's an extraneous mark. The introduction of the extraneous mark. So, on that basis, Your Honor, how can we, how can we look at this uh, indubitable paper trail as required in Section 6, RA 9369, as amended, amending RA 8436, Kung ganyan po ang ating audit trail, Your Honor. Next slide, please. Ito po, ito po. Mal mas malaking bagay po ito, Your Honor. Um, ito po yung listahan ng mga ballot images, Your Honor. They are supposed to be sequential listing. Sequential po lahat yan. Now, take a look at this example, Your Honor. Next slide, please. Tumalun po from 177 to 222. Oh, 127 pala. Sorry. 127. From sequence number 127, tumalun po siya to 222 at 222. So, nawala po yung 95 ballot images dyan, Your Honor. Nawala po yung 95 ballot images. In addition to that, sa baba, nawala din yung 60 pa. Hindi ko na lang po naipakita. May 1 to 40, wala pong ballot image 1 to 40. Wala pong 55 to 67. Wala pong 78 to 83. All in all, next slide, 155 po ang nawala dyan, Your Honor. That, that, that one. Sequence number 127, immediately preceding ballot image. Sequence 222, immediately succeeding ballot image. Nawala nga po yung 95 ballot images dyan, Your Honor, based on the sequencing of these ballot images. So saan po napunta? Doon sa baba. Next slide, please. Ayan. Ang butante po sa, dyan sa, ba, sa presintong iyan ay 612 lang. Tama naman po, ang ballot images ay 612. Pero tingnan po ninyo yung sequence number, 767. Nawala po yung 95 sa unahan, all of a sudden, nandun na sila sa baba. Ang question po, Your Honor, is that, is that something that you can trust? Is that an audit system, an audit trail that you can trust? Na nawawala po yung, yung ballot images sa unahan at nagdadagdag na lang po doon sa dulo. Now, we have to understand, Your Honor, that these sequential numbers were already assigned on the day of the elections. Kung buburahin mo yan, hindi na babalik yung idadagdag mo. Saan siya magdadagdag? Doon sa baba. Kaya umabot po ng 767 yung sequence number dyan, Your Honor. Ang, 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 ang reading ko, binura yung 95, nawala yung 95. Tapos nagdagdag ang bago, doon na, do, na siya nag-add up sa 613, 614, 615, 616, kasi hindi na siya pwedeng bumalik doon sa previous kasi na-assign na. At nabura. Next slide, Your Honor. Uh, that's, uh, okay, anyway, that's a computation lang. Let's do some smart mathic. Ayan po yun, Your Honor. Nawawala po yan. Yung mga ballot sequence numbers na yan, Your Honor. The ones in red, nawawala po yan. Hindi po yan accounted for. Next slide. Sir, I if it is Kung, kung mag-audit po tayo, sir, kung nawawala yung mga sequence numbers, sir, they have to explain. Ito po, sir, in, in the third district of Camarines Sur, 
166 precincts ang affected, 13,589 ang nagja-jump yung mga sequence numbers. That's widespread, Your Honor. Oh, pero sir, bakit po nawawala yung mga in the middle numbers? That, that's my point, Your Honor, that the ballot images could have been erased and then replaced afterwards, after post-election. Kaya nagdadagdag siya doon sa baba ng sequence number. All right, let's move on. Uh, the, the, the committee, Mr. Chair, this uh, information can be used of the can can be of use with the committee also. So may I now just uh, finally uh, um, can Comelec enlighten us on the process of transmittal of votes, you know, from the VCM to the municipal to provincial to regional board of canvassers. Who can do it? Uh, the executive director? On the part of the Comelec? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, Process of transmittal. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Nagpasok uh, ako ng balot ako. Yes, ma'am. BCM. From the start of the hmm. scanning po. Um, in for each clustered precinct, we have one BCM. Uh, we clustered um, at most uh, seven clustered precincts. Uh, established precinct after the voting after the voting after scanning all the ballots in a precinct um, the BEI will close the election and then it will automatically transmit to the municipal CCS uh, it, it will automatically print eight copies of uh, election returns and then um, those uh, ERs will be signed by the members of the BEI and then it will uh, print, and then it will automatically transmit to municipal CCS, mm. and then to uh, transparency server, and then to central server. And then yung provincial, yung provincial uh, after po ng, uh, yun naman municipal. po CCS, CCS uh. naman po, municipal CCS, uh. um, will receive all the precincts uh, assigned to the municipal CCS mm. and then after receiving all the results it will uh, consolidate the members of the board will generate a canvas report and then um, will generate a COC and then it will uh, transmit to the central server and to the provincial uh, CCS the provincial CCS will uh, s the same with the MBOC it will uh, receive all the transmitted results from the MBOC. It will consolidate, generate Canvas results, and generate COC. And after generating the COC and proclamation, it will transmit to the central server and to the national uh, BOC. All right. When transmitting data, uh, is the file being sent, uh, sent as a whole? Or is it uh, divided per position of candidates? Like, from for example, one file split into 11 files. Ganun ba? Yes, Your Honor. From the VCM po, it transmits one file, just one file, to the Municipal COC, Municipal, municipal Board of Canvasser. And then, uh, from the MBOC, it transmits only the higher level, but it's a uh, per position. It will now be a per position. Uh, per position, yun yung nag split na? Yan na po yung nag split um, It will transmit to the provincial and to the central server. So, okay, so did you use, uh, in the 2016 elections, did you use a queuing server or device? I was not aware of the queuing device, Your Honor. I, I don't know the, what's the, what do you mean by queuing device, but in central queuing server, server in central server, we have the central server and the meet me room. Mm -hmm. The meet me room, meet me room, which um, meet me, meet me, mo. Meet me room, meet me which room. converts all the uh, different telcos, parang ano um, in, in integrate lahat ng all tesco, telcos so that they can understand each other. They can connect each other. Yeah, you see. 
because there were proofs uh, presented that suddenly on May 10 to 11, the transmission of the BCMs did not go directly to your consolidating canvas system, the CCS. Instead, the transmission of the BCMs suddenly went through a queuing server before reaching the CCS. So, due to this uh, queuing server, one file is split into 11 files. Let me quote an article published in the Manila Times, quoting uh, Smartmatic. Smartmatic admits unofficial servers. During the clarificatory hearing at the Manila Prosecutor's Office on the complaint of for violation of the cybercrime law filed by former Abacada Representative Jonathan De La Cruz against Smartmatic and Comelec, personnel, Garcia Sino ba itong si Garcia? Si Marlon Garcia admitted that there existed a meet me room tulad na sinasabi nyo where the servers, several servers were located this was not divulged to the public and was never subjected to a source code review unlike the other servers used in the elections and there were no poll watchers for these servers so Again, may I know from Comelec, how many servers were used during the 2016 elections and are you aware of the existence of another server aside from your CNTA DNS, you had a CNTB DNS? Sir, uh, there is indeed a meet me room in our ser central server. Because for example, sir, if the BCM has Globe, use is using Globe, uh, and the consolidation system for the municipality is using Smart, the transmission packet from Globe would have to pass through the Globe telco network, and then it will go to the Meet Me room so that it when, it when the packet comes out, it will come out using the smart infrastructure so that the CCS laptop can understand what was sent by Globe. And pr I, I think that's the... In, in, in the law, in the law, computerizing uh, the elections in the Philippines, nando ba yan? Allowed ba yan? Ang sinabi lang po is that the election return shall be transmitted uh, electronically and secured. Wala wala pong mini mention how it should be done. Therefore, so kahit ilang queuing server, pwede kayo maglagay basta? Sir, uh, sir parang text yan eh. If I uh, send a text blast to all of us here, hindi yan papasok sabay-sabay. And then if your owner's uh, cell phone is off, and then you turn it on tomorrow, bukas papapasok yung aking... So it's, it's just a typical infrastructure of the telecommunications. And that is why you put a B, a CNT B DNS. Is that your answer? Bakit nga kayo naglagay ng queuing server? Yun ang sagot ba? <laughs> and uh, di, sinabi nila may meet me room eh. eh yun na yun. Yun na yun eh. Sir, baka yun yun. And I think it's a typical... Uh, telco infrastructure. Sir, again, uh, our in charge of the transmission is here, Mr. Ilagan. Mr. Ilagan, please answer the question. Sir, the CNTV or CNTB DNS is the backup DNS. CNTA is the primary DNS. It's a backup DNS, sir. Because the setup, setup of all servers, transparency and central we set up it with uh, redundancy and high availability. That's why all servers and all network equipment have backup. Don't, with the permission of the Senate President, if you don't have a backup, what happens? I mean, ano ang uh, danger or ano ang purpose ng backup? There could be a failure of transmission, sir. 
We, we, we have a, a final, one final. Uh, I am told that you have an explanation to this, Attorney Chong. One final point from Attorney Chong. Mr. Chair, bago lang mag explain to Mr. Chair, I have one question with the permission of the Senate President. Did you inform the political parties and I guess yung mga N NGOs that you would be putting up another uh, yung meet me room or the backup server? Was there full disclosure? I guess uh, we can ask the <laughs> representatives or, if they were or reflected in the diagrams that yes, you uh, uh, gave to the public. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, before the before elections, uh, Comelex project director then was Commissioner or former Commissioner Christian Robert Lim, and we asked the political parties, the lawyers, to go to our Santa Rosa warehouse, where. Commissioner Lim explained how the transmission works. So your lawyers were there, the IT people were there, political party representatives. So I, I assume they understood what was going on. Because nobody asked further questions at that time. Okay, Attorney Chong, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, follow up lang, Senate President. So in that briefing, uh, former Commissioner Lim, uh, did you ha did you hand out any written? Uh, uh, I, I believe so, Your any Honor. Document to so, if you can retrieve those, so I am no longer with the uh, public. If, uh, the executive Maybe. director can retrie retrieve yeah. those all the documents given out to who whoever whoever may have been there to brief them on the uh, flow of the oh. transmission. Actually, Your Honor, I see some persons who attended that meeting here present today. I think that's Attorney Arthur Alistair. He was representing a uh, Liberal Party. Attorney Ivan Uy, who was representing UNA. I think I saw Attorney Hubert Guevara. He was representing NPC. No, maybe they can also verify that fact. Your Honor. Uh, the uh, fact of the briefing, but I'm 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 concerned of the, the content of the briefing. So, not only what was said, but uh, most uh, more importantly, the, the written uh, the, the materials given to them. Uh, so, so where were we? Tony Chong, on this uh, queuing Tony server. Chong and then the the queuing server, yes. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, yung sinabi po ni Executive Director Tolentino kanya as an example na when they text blast, some of the phones are off, and then you will receive it later tomorrow. That's actually a classic queue server. That's the work of a queuing server. Not queue, queue ko yung mga transmissions. Um, I have a slides. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I will try to explain it in as layman as possible. Um, yung... Um, what the queue server could do. Um, please, yung queue server po, uh, that one. Um, what we are showing is, we cannot prove definitively that it exists, but we will look at the paper trail, Your Honor. Basically, that's how, as we understand it, the VCMs will transmit. It may harang ho yung queue server, which is like a checkpoint. And then the queue server forwards it to the Municipal Board of Canvassers to the uh, central server of the Comelec and the transparency server that's handled by media, PPCRV for that matter. Now, first, this is hidden from the public because it is we do not know about this. The second one is that there was no source code review. They didn't admit it. They were not reviewed at all. Next slide, please. There was only one packet of data that was transmitted from the VCM. As shown, this is a t example, a clip of the audit log from 2010 that there is only one single results transmission file that is transmitted to the queue server. Then the queue server breaks it down, breaks it down into 11 or 13 separate tallies. Uh, then they are forwarded to the MBOC, to the central server, and to the, uh, what is that, transparency server. But uh, I think tama yung sinabi ni Director Florilita na for lower level positions, hindi na siya nagtatransmit doon. Ang full na 11 or 12, 13 would be MBOC then PBOC, Bo Provincial Board of Canvassers. So, dyan sa SKU server, nag split yung single results transmitted file that was transmitted from the BCM. Isang file lang po yan. Pagdating sa queue server, it splits into 11 or 13 tallies. 11 for regular, 13 for ARMM. Kasi may dalawang position sa ARMM, yung governor at uh, assemblyman. Next slide, please. Ito ho yung 13 or 11 or 13 tallies. The tally numbers on the left, and then that's the position. So the tallies represents the categories of positions. So 11, pag regular, 
13 pag ARMM. Next slide, please. This is a certified true copy of the audit uh, of the print log from the consolidation canvassing system in 2010, which is basically the same as the VCM. Uh, sir, you read that from down to top. Baligtad po, hindi po top to bottom, down to top po yan. So, when you transmit, nandyan ho nakarecord yung 11 tallies. Tally from precinct 7805002. And then, nirecord po niya yung 11 tallies. Then, may na-transmission na naman dun sa dulo, which is from precinct number 7805002. Yung 005 dito sa baba. So, these are two different precincts, Your Honor. But take a look at the tallies. They were recorded as coming from a uniform 127.0.0.1. So, that's the Q survey, Your Honor. The 127.0.0.1, because when the machine transmits it, isang po yung packet yan. Pagdating dun sa Q survey, in-split niya into 11 tallies, and the 11 tallies are recorded now in the MBOC. This is MBOC. And they are both 127.0.0.1, although they come from two different precincts. So, okay, in 2016, this is what we found. Next slide, please. This is a list of all, yung mga, yung mga talis po, Your Honor, yung talis 11, 13, as uh, obtained from the transparency server. Next slide. Uh, pindot pa isa. That's a typical example, Your Honor. Press, please. The positions on the left, tingnan ho ninyo yung time of reception, Your Honor, magkaiba. Iba yung pong time, yung, iba pong time na natanggap yung President, iba pong time na natanggap yung Vice President, iba pong time na natanggap yung ibang positions. Eight of these categories have different reception times, which we call asynchronous transmissions. Kasi hindi po siya synchronized. Asynchronous transmissions, sir, because the, the 11 tallies have different reception times, although ang karamihan sa presinto were received all at the same time. But there are these type of precincts na, na split talaga at iba-iba yung time of receptions. Uh, next slide, please. Out of 92,509 clustered precincts operating on election day, 77,000 77,000 798 precincts were synchronous. Pare-pareho yung time nila. Pero, yung 14,711 precincts, magkaiba po yung time of reception for the different categories of positions. Magkaiba po yung time of reception ng magkaiba-ibang talis. All those 14,711 asynchronous transmissions totaled 7,061,000 votes, Your Honor. So, ang ibig kong sabihin, someone... Uh, someone, something, or whatever it is, stands in the middle between the the uh, voting machine and the final destination, Your Honor, for this That's transmission. That's 2016? This is 2016, 16. Your Honor. That's Pinakita ko oh, lang yung paper trail oh, okay, also uh, in 2010. But, Attorney Chong, even though the file has been split into 11... Or 13 tallies, Your Honor. Or 13 uh, other files din ba yun? Tallies, tallies. Tallies. We can, can we still determine from the log entry the VCM, the, the specific VCM? Uh, so you can determine it if you will summon the CCS. Ah, but, but not from that line. He, all, no. all, all you will see is that there is a, an IP address of the uh, uh, in that, server. In that, uh, no, sir, there ah, is a, a record of what IP address is yeah. used by the yeah. sending yes, machine. The sending, yeah. And then yung record na na the 11 tallies were transmitted from a uniform IP address, which yeah. is the Q server. Which is the in-between, in 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 ah. sir. So that proves the in-between. Yes, that, that's, that's what okay. I meant, that we need uh, to prove it independently uh, of what Senator that's Soto that's and his uh, witness is saying. Uh, Ms. Akol, yes. Back up, I will back up that with data that we, uh, we uh, analyzed from the transparency server at SNAMFREL. We gathered all the data, we ran it through a statistical program, R, and we found out that uh, there were 5,000, because we only did the national elections. The 14,000 precincts that uh, Glenn is talking about uh, also contains the local elections, the local, okay, only on the national elections, there were 5,567 precincts that were unsynchronized. 
We have the log time of uh, when it went for president, vice president, senator, and party list. On election day, May 9, uh, out of the 43.6 million votes, uh, the server already had, the transparency server had 37.9 million votes registered. That's about 86% of the votes. Now, we tried to, to uh, and I'm sorry, this is the Senate, but we did graph the president, the vice president, the party list, and the senators. And for up to May 9, 12 o'clock, you would see that it's as if the country voted one way. And then on May 10 and May 11, there were already uh, crisscrossing in the graph. Okay, that's for, uh, so I will back up what he said on the unsynchronous. That means to say that the votes came in and they were separated into different servers or several uh, queue servers and then consolidated because otherwise they should have arrived at the same time. Now, I wanted to butt in also when um, Attorney Lasatin spoke because in the Supreme, Council, Supreme Court hearing at that time when we were talking about digital signature and Justice Carpio asked, did you use the digital signature? And he said, yes, that's wrong. Because what he was referring to was the machine digital signature. However, in the 2010 elections, the BEIs were asked. There was a, there was a lecture to the BEIs. They were said, if you, the question says, will you use the digital signature? Press no. So that means to say that Smartmatic and Comelec did not use the digital signature. Actually, they should have been disqualified because if you looked at the bid specs, several uh, items were on the digital signature and in their bid, digital signature, zero. That means they did not include it in the bid for a digital signature. And at that time, the consultant of Chairman Mello said that masyadong mahal yung very sign. Okay, but that's not, maybe that's why the other bidders lost is because they incorporated that in their bid on the digital signature. Thank you. G can you wrap up? Uh, yes, Attorney Chong. Chong, wrap up. Your Honor, I would just like to ask if you want to see the uh, progression of votes for senators. They move in the same way. They, they rise and fall the same way. If you want to okay, ask one, uh, one final to see it, oh. Your Honor. Who did this? Um, you, you did this. But you're responsible uh, for this. No, no uh, it's, it's Professor Lex Muga. Ah, okay, Lex Muga. Ateneo de Manila University. Okay. You Sige can no. summon him. Uh, please, um, other anomalies and uh, irregularities. Uh, please, uh, the, the slide on other irregularities and anomalies. Uh, please press. Uh, Please press. Sir, those are tampered ballots in 2013. Next slide, please. They're in the house. Uh, next slide, please. That one, sir. Uh, sir, okay, if you want to look at it. House lang, what house? Uh, we don't know what house, sir. Tapos there, do it's nasa, nasa bahay lang po. Yan. Yan. The, votes for all ca the votes for all candidates for senators move in the same way. Uh, whenever the results, this is 2016, Your Honours. Whenever the results come in, um, they actually move the same way, up, down. Either they plateau, they go down, they go up. All of them move the same way, Your Honours. You mean sabay sabay lahat ng mga kandidato? Yes, sir. Parang merong fixed percentage bawat kandidato. Wag yung kulay lahat na kuha one, yung number one na kuha one hundred. Sa susunod na pisinto puro ganon lahat. Yes, sir. If, if the graph. If you're looking at the graph, that's the way it goes. And sir, if the usual sagot po nito is law of large numbers, it does not apply po, sir. Because meron ho, this, this presentation is actually graph, is actually based on a 10-minute interval. Pinaliit po talaga yung numbers ni Professor Muga para hindi po maobjekan ng law of large numbers. So, yung pinakamahaba po, sir, yung spike po na pinakamataas, 10 million votes po yan. The next spike, is about 2 million, then yung parang plateau, mga 2 million din po yan. Or the rest, yung, like for example, yung, na, yung parang nasa valley na, kung, kung bukid yan, valley na siya sa baba. 
That's about 50,000 votes lang po. Itong mga, itong mga last part na parang valley rin, mga 50 to 100 to 200,000 lang po. The law of large numbers does not apply. But uh, the candidates all move in the same fashion. They rise, they fall, all at the same time. So, okay, if, so that's it. So, up, up to 12 midnight. Yes, sir. And okay, so up to 12 midnight, okay, sir, just sir. to... Okay, Komelek. Okay, Komelek. Komelek. Can Komelek or Smartmatic react to everything? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, sir, we'll go back to how we voted last time. The voter would feed the ballot and a voter receipt would come out. Nobody said that, Oy, bakit iba itong aking balota? So, accepted ng voter. Then we closed the polls, printed eight copies, distributed eight copies, announced the results, nobody complained. Then we transmitted. After transmission, pag sinabi transmission successful, we print 22 other copies, we, re we announced it already, gave it to the parties there, 30 all in all, nobody complained. So all that I have to do is call my friend in the canvassing center pare sa precinct number 1A ito yung boto natin nobody complained and we have been talking here for almost two hours and I have yet to hear someone say that the election returns that were transmitted to the canvassing centers that were officially canvassed did not match no, walang, wala pong nagsasabing ganun and as I said, from the very beginning, the voter did not complain. The watchers, after announcing the results, did not complain. Sa canvassing, wala rin. No allegations that there are mismatched. Paano may magko-complain? Ngayon lang namin nalaman nag-early transmission kayo. Sa kahit po, sir, may aid kayo ay nag-transmit eh. Mr. Gas Lagman, Mr. Jer. Yes, Mr. Gas Lagman. Uh, nobody complained because nobody saw the counting. <laughs> the moment you automate the counting at the precinct level, then you lose the transparency. That is that has always been our position. Just just a qu quick question: How do you how do you explain, uh, Commissioner Gash, the point that there are election pre election returns from the precinct level? and they match the national. Is that, therefore, there is a, if there is cheating, they also tampered with the election returns in the precinct level? The VCM could have been rigged. So the election returns that it will produce uh, is rigged. It will match whatever, you know, if you send it to the central server, they will match. That is a conclusion. Do you have proof of that? No. Uh, uh, you have no proof of uh, that. What? I'm saying is that it's vulnerable to that. All right. But the so there's no proof doubts to that. Doubts can be thrown, but there is no actual proof. No, I was just, I was only responding to the point that uh, we don't know because nobody witnessed the counting. There was a, a, a random national audit <laughs> done by the PVCRB. Oh. Even the random num man, uh, manual audit produced uh, 99.96 percent mm -hmm. when yeah. the requirement was 99.995. Uh, the random manual audit report issued by NAMPREL actually states that the difference might be because of a, a misinterpretation of the auditor at the moment of re reading the shades. That is what the report says. Okay, so uh, uh, only one. Attorney Donato, yes, to represent yes. the Tangulang Democracia. Yes, sir. Only one point, sir. Uh, with due respect to Mr. Lasatin and Mr. Tolentino, I have here a, a decision, RTC, Aranas versus Municipal Election Registrar. This is for the 2013 elections, Your Honor. This is proof that the manual count does not match the electronic count. It says here, upon manual counting of the votes, appearing in the official ballots in the three clustered precincts, candidate Villanueva garnered a total of 900 votes as against the official Comelec count of only 781 votes. 
that's a big discrepancy, Your Honor. This is a RTC decision, final and executory. <coughs> Your Honor, may I just uh, respond? <coughs> One, Your Honor, uh, even up to now, we can show, Your Honor, that there is a digital signature on all of the election returns, Your Honor. There is the I button that you put on the machine that is where the digital signature is. And in fact, Your Honor, Justice Carpio, when he interpolated me in the Senate hearing, after explaining to him and when he saw the I button, which he thought the digital signature, Your Honor, was that of the machine identification, he agreed. And it is in the decision that he says, uh, now I understand. Now, Your Honor, that can be demonstrated any time, Your Honor. Now, what <coughs> Ms. Ackle is referring to is a possible sp specific digital signature for each of the BEI. That is possible, Your Honor. But if Comelec will require that, it can be done. But the problem, Your Honor, is this. You will have your three BEI members to be given special, uh, like an ATM card, Your Honor, that have to be punched. So if one of them do not appear during the election, you will have no election in that precinct. Uh, uh, Your Honor, that, that is, of course, a decision. Yes, point. Oh. That is the decision, of course, to be made by our client, the Comelec. Mm -hmm. If they want it installed, we can install it, Your Honor. So that is not a problem. Now there is a reference to uh, what Mr. Chong referred to, Your Honor, as this majest. In that, uh, that happened only in 2013. Why did it happen? Because the printing, the, the ink that was used on the ballot smudged, Your Honor. And the mylar, you know, uh, just like in a, uh, in a photocopying machine, Your Honor, the ballot, picked, uh, the, the mylar picked up the, the smudges. So, of course, when uh, the ballots were fed in, they, it uh, took in the smudges. And later on, it disappeared because as you feed in the ballot, napupura. So, that is an uh, aberration, Your Honor, because uh, that did not happen in 2010, and that did not happen in 20. Uh, 16. That happened, we admit, Your Honor, in 2013. But that is not the defect of the machine, but the machine still counted it correctly. And, Your Honor, we have been talking about all of these different, uh, as I said, doubts that they are all, <coughs> uh, that they are putting into the automated election system. Your Honor, if that is true, what they are showing here, that the votes were not counted properly. Your Honor, as I said, in the different election protests, they look at the ballots. They compare it with the scanned copy. And Your Honor, as I said, the HR has decided several, several issues. The RTC and the Comelec and all of them, Your Honor, not one protest has yes. succeeded. Thank you, Attorney Lasatina. No, uh, let's learn from the 2013 experience. No? Because in 2013, we used the same machines in 2010. Now, we will be using the machines used in 2016. So, so that's why it, it did not happen in 2010, brand new. It did not happen in 2016, brand new. But in 2019, used machines, the same as in 2013, we used, used machines and then go to digital lines, smudges, dirt, etc. So. Let's learn from uh, our experience in 2013. So can we just be brief na lang? Uh, no, 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 no need to debate on digital signature. Let the Supreme Court ano, uh, the decide on what that really means. No, uh, no yes, but Ms. the Akola. debate that we're saying is that they put it in their bid bulletins. They define the digital signature as the definition that is given as well in the e-commerce law of what any, any transmission should be covered by a digital signature, meaning to say you have a public key and a private key, just like if you go to an ATM, okay? So therefore, they had a machine digital signature, which has an I button, which is controlled by Comelec. 
and by Smartmatic. That is not a digital signature because then he who controls the key controls elections. Ma'am, can we ask the, your organization to submit to us a position paper on the digital signature issue? Okay. But you mentioned bid documents, but you mentioned the year 2010. 2009. Oh, right, 2009. Pero uh, how about these new machines we are using? But they were bid out under... Ano they, na? they carried the same TOR. Uh, yeah. So you discussed this one, itong present na po. Uh, whatever, was the bi whatever were the bidding... Uh, documents or requirements for this particular machine na gagamitin. Uh, thank you, ma'am. So, uh, na, and, and me, 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 I'm looking to the left. That is so Mr. Barrios, just, just be brief. Pa. Okay. Uh, uh, if we look at the election law, 1969, it's loaded with technical specifications. There's only one specification for the owner of the system, the voter, and that is the voter verification requirement which Smartmatic has never complied with. And it can, this kind of system can never comply with that requirement, no matter how hard they try. As long as the machine is counting, voter verification cannot be done. That's why we're na naman ang 2018. That's why we should consider it from the point of view of, of the voter this time. No? Ano ang kailangan ng voter? Now, the, uh, this, uh, th this is the reason why hindi ka maka you cannot go to court because the purpose of the verification is to see kung tama o mali. How can you complain kung hindi mo makikita kung tama o mali? And th that's why there's a, it's such a cute argument na walang, it cannot be proven but, but because the, the very means to prove it is dismantled or it's not complied with. Now they say that my verification don't sa resibo. Let's take a look at the system. No? A system, in short, consists of input, process, output. Yung resibo is verification of input. It proves to you na tama yung sinulat mo. What we need to verify is anong ginawa ng makina and you, sh you can see that by verifying the output. It's a pretty cute argument to say na na-verify mo yung boat mo by verifying your input. That's nothing. You have, to, you have to check kung anong ginawa ng makina. And that's the only way to verify. Thank you. Tony Rui? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I just want to respond to the query of um, Senator um, Binay a while ago regarding the source code review. So we were part of the source code review team um, that was um, invited by Comelec to do the source code review, and we were uh, in attendance in those meetings um, called by Commissioner Lim. Um, we reviewed three source codes, the um, election management system, the VCM, and the CCS. Um, we never reviewed any source code of the Q server, if that existed, um, especially if the allegation of um, Attorney Chong that uh, the Q server serves to disaggregate the votes and then re-aggregate them for the transmission allocating it, then um, if that was really the purpose, we would have insisted on a source code review because that would form a very crucial part of the entire AES system. Thank you very much. So when, when the system was explained to you, you never got the impression that there would be a Q server? Um, not even in the diagrams uh, we're, we're, uh, we're released not by the Comelec? We're not aware of that. No, no, yes, we're okay, not aware so of that's that. a good, good fact. Now, uh, Mr. G uh, uh, you mentioned that Comelec should not use the same s machines. I, I understand that they bought those machines already. Yes, uh, so it's a, ang gusto sabihin, in, in next year's election, this will be used machines S just like in 2013. So in 2013, we had smudges, you know. Let's anticipate because we're using or uh, used machines. Uh, they bought it already. A fact naman yun. Uh. Si, uh, sino pa? Uh, Tony Chong? Yes. yes, one final word. Your Honor, Smartmatic wishes to dismiss these allegations as um, duda lang or doubts. But if you are really, if you really look at all these evidence, I've been looking at it for the last eight years, they are actually mortal wounds in, our, in the integrity of our election system. You cannot run an election system that is littered with questions from, uh, from this to that and everything. As a matter of fact, Your Honor, with respect to the digital signature, w I have also proof there to show, isa lang ang pumirma ng digital signature, but under Comeric Resolution 10057, tatlo ang dapat pumirma. Isa lang po ang actual na pumirma. And it can be traced through the logs, Your Honor. I've been reading the logs since 2010. Now, these are serious questions 
these are mortal wounds. They cannot dismiss it anymore. Ang dami na yung sinabi lang po ni Senator Soto, 459 early transmissions. That is something that we have to dig deeper. I know this honorable committee does not have the technical expertise, but I would suggest your owners, from my heart, I would appeal to you, bring this investigation to the higher level, to the next level. There is the Department of uh, Information and Communications Technology who can do a professional investigation. Get the raw logs, your honor. Hindi po yung printed, printed logs, your honor, kasi sinubukan ko po yung DNS, sir. Di ba? Uh, CNTA DNS. Binura ko po yung A, ginawa ko pong D. Pwede po pala yung pinakita nila. <laughs> kasi may pinakita sila, di ba? Yung under subpina by ACT. Just before I left kaninang umaga, binura ko yung A, pinalitan ko ng D, tapos sinib ko. Eh, siyempre, ang lalabas, when I open it again, B na po, hindi na upo A. So, ibig sabihin, don't rely on what they're going to provide you, just like what they provided with SET. Kasi pwede yung burahin. You go for the raw logs, your honor. Um, for the information of this committee, I already sent I already sent a letter to the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee dated February 15. Nandun po ang detalyadong logs ng lahat ng servers na kakailanganin po ng investigasyon, Your Honor. They have not given it. They have not acted on it. Please, kung mahari lang po, summon them, have them investigated. Pwede din pong gumawa tayo ng technical working group. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Your Honor. Th that's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. One, uh, to, to wrap up, no, uh, on my privilege speech because you, uh, you have other items on the agenda. The key word here is, and they have been using it, both Comelec and uh, Smartmatic, what has come out are doubts. Sabi nila. So that is the key word, doubts. We're talking of elections in the Philippines, Mr. President. This is the only time na ang mayaman at mahirap, tabla, tigi-tigi isang boto lang. That is why voting is a holy act. Pagkatapos, doubt. There should be no doubts pagdating sa eleksyon. I agree with the Senate President. So, can I now request the COMELEC through the Chairman? The Chairman is here. Okay. Please give this committee your official answer and or explanation uh, to the observations mentioned by the Senate President in his two privileged speeches dated alam niyo na yun, May, May, March 6 and uh, I think March 14, 2018. So we need official stand of the COMELEC. Oh, wala namang right or wrong dyan. Basta, we, but for the record, we need to know what is your uh, analysis on what happened. Okay? Okay po? Okay, so. so thank yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you for that. Mr. Senate President, uh, they have given their commitment. So, we can now leave the topic of the uh, privileged speeches and proceed to... Uh, thank you, thank you. We, uh, the committee will serve uh, lunch. Um, okay, so... Just take your lunch. We'll have a working lunch. Let's go now to Senate Bill number Senate Bills numbers 307 and 11 one, uh, 1777. They both uh, amend RA 9006 on the on the rates. On the rates. Hi. Yes. Uh, you're uh, no uh, longer you're yeah. you're no longer working. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, so uh, Chairman uh, Brilliant is then thank you but We'll serve lunch. You cannot take your lunch here now. Thank you. Thank you. Hindi pa ako nakapag-comment, sir. <laughs> ah, you want to say something? Yes, Chairman. Hindi ba? Meron na ako sa sabihin sa'yo. Okay, let's... Uh, Since before, uh, Tony yes. Chong has been presenting so many things, mm. can I be allowed to present something also about Tony Chong? That he's, he has now a pending election offense case, and it has already it, been proven that he's... Okay, now, Chairman. Uh, uh, gusto ko lang sabihin na uh, he comes out with so many documents and I have been monitoring what he has been doing. So I also have my own presentation, which I can show that he produces documents which are stolen or tampered mm. or corrected. So we better make sure that we don't believe everything yes, he is lang. Sabi ko naman kanina eh. If Attorney Chong, uh, eh. Chong somehow made a mistake 
an infraction of the law in his presentation, uh, uh, somehow deceived this, is deceiving this committee, put it in your written explanation and then we will also go over it. Okay, I'm coming out with videos, him showing ballots, authentic, claiming to be authentic, mm. but it was stolen. My reputation and integrity has been attacked before uh, this committee and I would like to respond, even just for a minute. Yeah, we have one minute. Uh, young witness po niya ay estafador, falsificador, child molester, drug peddler. All rolled into one. I submit my case, Your Honor. Okay, so that's it. Pero yung kanyang wi yung witness ko ho, uh, siya nagturo lahat. Kaya nga estafador. Sige, okay. Anyway, anyway, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, okay na yan. Uh, uh, besides, Mr. Chairman, uh, Attorney Chong is not on trial here. Yes, yes. Okay, no, no, you no. are in trial here. I, I, have have videos, I have videos. I have videos. I have pronouncements in public, radio yeah. interview. I can produce it now, saying that he stole ballots. Okay, that's different uh, subject matter. Okay, so we will now proceed to the Senate bills and the House Bill 6604 which uh, all of these bills now amend the uh, existing law regulating the payment for uh, airtime in TV, radio, and uh, space for uh, print. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman of the Comelec, can you comment, please? Yes, maybe present uh, Director James Jimenez, sir, to comment on that uh, proposed bill. Thank you. Director Jimenez is recognized. Director Jimenez, uh, on the three Thank um, you, Mr. bills, um, specifically on HB 6604, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, it's in two parts. The first part seeks to uh, give the COMELEC the power to regulate the rates of political propaganda and prevent media outlets from increasing advertising rates during the one-year period before the elections. And the other one increases the amount of discount. Can I, can I ask for silence, please? Uh, uh, silence, silence. we will have a working lunch, but please uh, maintain silence because we are actually working over lunch. So let's all listen now to uh, Director Jimenez of the Comelec. Uh, so uh, from the top again, uh, from the top, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, House Bill 6604 actually proposes two changes. First, it proposes that the Comelec be given the power to um, regulate uh, the rates for uh, TV advertisements during the one-year period prior to the elections. The second part deepens the, the discount to be given to political advertisers during the campaign period. The second part uh, says that the discount should be increased to 50%. Right now it's about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about 30%. Um, so as far as the second part is concerned, the Comelec has no objection. That's uh, the, the problem there really is between the advertisers and, uh, and the law, no? Um, it's the first part, sir, that's a little, uh, you know, that we have some questions about. The first part uh, gives the Comelec the power to regulate rates of political propaganda one year before the elections. The thing, that th the thing that that's giving us pause, Mr. Chairman, is that one year before the elections, it's very difficult to define what is political propaganda. One year before the elections, no one will have filed a certificate of candidacy yet. Uh, one year before the elections, we in fact, we do not consider as political advertisement anything that's, um, that would normally be considered premature campaigning, precisely because there is no definition of the law that covers that. So uh, what will be the basis for, um, for controlling the rates of political propaganda, again, if pro political propaganda does not even, um, is not even we very well defined. So uh, that's our main, that's our main uh, concern there, sir. The second concern is that, of course, if you have that sort of control prior to elections, when you're prior to elections, then you're only really just um, encouraging early 
exposures of, of that nature. So that's our comment on, on the House bill, sir. The Senate bills, have you studied them? So we're studying them, sir, pero uh, same naman, sir. Hands off care because they're, talk about the, they're talking about rates, no? Just the rates and the discount. Uh, okay. So sa amin, sir, wala kami objection dun. Is it? Mr. Chairman, Sir, Mr. may I ask Komelik if your comments uh, were asked or uh, did the Supreme Court consult you when they were interpreting the, um, uh, the contents of the law that uh, lifted the ad ban? Sir, um, I'll have to refer to my colleagues, sir, because they were lifted prior to my arrival in the commission. Um, I would like to ask Sana si Director Tolentino. He was there. But he's out. When he comes back, I'll say again. Yeah, because um, what happened was that um, when the, t the time that we were debating on this law that lifted the political ad ban, no? it was Senator Raul Rocco, who was chairman of the Committee on Electoral Reforms. I was his vice chair. No, and uh, when we were lifting the political ad ban, I was uh, um, cautioning them no, on the rates and the type of, uh, uh, the, the number of uh, minutes that a, a candidate should be allowed. You know, um, I was already uh, cautioning them because I know na mamahal ito eh. From the 1987 to the 1992 elections to the 1995 elections, wala namang, walang problema eh, actually, dahil may political ad ban. But when, they were, when we were lifting it in the 10th Congress, no, in the 10th Congress, uh, all the way uh, to the 11th Congress, I believe, um, minarning ako na sila doon sa number of minutes allowed a candidate because wala nang kalaban-laban ng mahirap na kandidato. Dahil siguradong mamahal eh. Mamahalan at mamahalan yan, hindi maaaring hindi. Ano, sasamantalahin yan because every, every three years lang nangyayari yan. Ano? So, I caution them. And the agreement was that uh, it was 120 minutes per candidate. As a radio, 180 minutes per candidate. Malinaw yun eh. Pati sa debates namin, malinaw yun eh. All of a sudden, the Supreme Court comes up with a decision later on, and I don't know who lobbied for it, na 120 minutes daw per candidate, per station. Ah, wala na kabuhay-buhay, lalo yung mahirap doon. Walang kapag-apag-asa. Sir, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, ang mga nag-push din po niyan, yung industry din. Um, if I'm not mistaken, one of the proponents of the per station na, na qualification was, uh, among others, KBP. Because basically that increased, the, uh, the, the argument was that it increased the airtime that was available to, to the politicians, therefore they would be able to more fully explain their positions. What can you explain in 30 seconds? No, no, no. So it will not, it will not have continuity. Kahit na bigyan kita ng 100 minutes, kung tigta 30 seconds na nang lalabas per every time, putol-putol ang salita mo, paano magiging coherent yung sinasabi mo all the way. It's uh, that, that argument is uh, not acceptable. And in any case, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the ads are repeated. So you're basically repeating the same message over and over again. It doesn't really in, it doesn't really add to the information. Yeah, it does not. As a matter of fact, the only the only benefit there is awareness, and the rich candidates and those candidates who have enough money get awareness uh, and recall. At yung mga wala, ay ilista mo nang talo unless maglikot yung smartmatic. Unless maglikot lang, sabi ko, ha? hindi ko sino sinasabi naglikot. Oh. Okay, so let's hear from the uh, industry. Uh, any inputs or comments from the industry? Uh, Mr. Barbie Atyansa, please. 
Your, your uh, Barbara, what are you representing? Uh, what? Uh, your Honor, I'm representing the United Print Media Organization. It's an association of all print media organizations in the country. And um, as far as uh, the UPMG is concerned, uh, three of us are also represented here on its private capacity, Philippine Daily Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, and the uh, Philippine Star. Uh, we've collectively talked about it, uh, about the Senate bills at hand. And we agree with the principle of, uh, play, uh, e of play making even the playing field for all candidates. We think also that uh, making outrageous, having outrageous rates for advertising would be detrimental to the less fortunate or the less uh, financially endowed candidates. However, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senate, Senate President, uh, we believe that one, regulating in terms of uh, having a moratorium on price increases so that we can avoid any organization to take advantage of the campaign period is something that we are very open to and uh, we appreciate the value of. On the other hand, on the regulation or even mandating the um, discounted rates for political ads, are something that we beg the Senate and the House as well to please reconsider. It is something that we feel is detrimental to our to the status of the media organizations involved, considering a lot of different changes, the change in landscape, the presence of uh, digital digital media as well, and of course the cost of production. Right now, Mr. President, as we speak, the cost of paper, for example, in our case in print, has already increased by 60%. And uh, that, has, uh, that will make untenable the operational cost for us if we mandate a discount of, 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 of as much as 50%. We beg uh, the Senate, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, that we consider uh, preserving the principles of free enterprise and let the free market forces dictate the pricing for us. And uh, as, uh, the thing that we can pledge to you is that we are with you in trying to protect the equitability of uh, of uh, campaign channels that we will provide all candidates. And uh, we assure you that we will be fair, objective, and always, uh, always with the best interest of the country in mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do the, do the uh, players in the print media industry also announce or, pub or publish their published rates, uh, rates to, the, to, yeah, the, to yes, the public, to the public? So so on a per inch, bayan, or per, per square inch uh, basis, bayan? We have standard uh, published rates, uh, so Mr. Have. Chairman. Yes, okay. sir. So you have. So Okay, so, and your published rates, of course, will allow you to profitably operate your business. Tama? Yes, sir. Uh, so, and then now, uh, the present state of the law says that you give 10%, uh, the present state of the law, 10%. Okay. 10% standard. So the, the proposed bill, uh, one uh, says 50, one and the, uh, m some say 20 for the print made. So, yes, so you're worried about your the viability of your business after the discount. That's correct. Because uh, if, if the paper cost has increased, your published rate will also increase. That's correct. Beyond, and we are just getting the discount from your published rate. Mm -hmm. So if we make it... Uh, now it's 10. Uh, you, you have no comment on the 10 because okay lang sa inyo yung 10. Uh, wha what are you worried about? The 50 or the 20? Are you even worried about the 20 percent? In, in principle, Mr. Chairman, we're worried about, uh, yeah, you're mandating the, the amount of the increase basically because, well, of course, of all of this will be, pub will be based on the published rate. Mm. That would be something that we can live on. Yeah. As a matter of fact, even the 10 percent, we were, we've always, we've always thought that it is something the uh, uh, detrimental to our operations as far as uh, mandating the thing. But realistically, we do understand there are things that we have to do to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. Siguro yung uh, we're just looking at the right level for it. Yeah. What? That's it. You know my question ko. When you mentioned about uh, viability na, you, you, parang you mentioned earlier that yes, it's now the viability of your business. Yes, sir. Now it's 10, so you, okay, you, you, you have lived with that. Eh? We can live uh, with that. We are touching the 10 to, for, to give the candidates an even bigger discount. Saka worried, it's a 50% discount, it's a 20% discount, 
or somewhere in between? Um, as far as uh, the industry is concerned, Your Honor, the 10%, I think, is something that we've already lived with as far as print is concerned. And uh, we pray that we keep it on status quo. Uh, we, we have heard the, the stand of the... Of the what's, a, what's the name of the group again? United Print Media Group, Your Honor. Lahat po yan, nandiyan, the, even the, the national uh, dailies and yes, sir. the tabloids. Also. Broadsheets, tabloids, uh, magazines. magazines. Okay. At okay, po, kasama na rin po yung mga digital channels namin. Ah, so digital. Okay, can we hear from uh, the TV or the radio uh, groups or stations? Attorney Pablo Dor? Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and to the members of this committee. I come with a prepared statement, so uh, I'd like to request permission for me to read the, the statement. Okay. Sir, go ahead, sir. So this is a statement of support, really, for the policy impetus, impetus behind the effort to amend. Uh, ABS-CBN believes that the electoral process is indispensable to and that honest and fair elections is one of the fun foundations of a strong democracy and country. In this regard, an informed electorate is essential to selecting and electing officials, electing public officials who have the people's best interests at heart and who will be selfless public servants. With this in mind, ABS-CBN has always advocated voter education through its news programs and special features, including debates, discussions of issues, and airtime for complex information and dissemination ABS-CBN provides television and radio programming at no cost to the government or candidates that keeps its audience abreast of the right as voters and informed of the qualifications, platforms, and track record of candidates. ABS-CBN has been and will always remain committed to informing the Filipino voter in order to empower him and allow the full realization of his or her right to vote. Thus, ABS-CBN will support any effort towards this end including the objectives of this bill to be discussed this afternoon. As more information is given to a voter, the more he or she is in a position to vote based on issues and qualifications, and less on personalities and dependency. Nonetheless, the, the draft bills have the potential to drastically impact the business of broadcasting, where substantial investments are made, both in equipment and programming. Thus, taking into consideration existing and continuing efforts toward voter education, the broadcasting industry hopes that an equitable solution may be reached that will allow the bill's objective to be achieved while being fair to both the broadcasters and the candidates. That is my prepared statement. Thank you, sir. Uh, so thank you for the support also. So, uh, uh, but in effect, uh, it's in the details, no? Uh, yes, that's in the details. Can you comment on the details? Well, we are behind the advocacy to to improve the affordability of the of, uh, of the rates. So I believe that uh, the discussion should now go to the technical working group in order to come out with the best uh, and reasonable rates. For the to, to get to that, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with your permission, to get to that, how much um, in the 2016 elections uh, on prime time, how much uh, did the uh, a 30, uh, 30 second their cost 30 on prime time. Uh, I don't have that information, but I believe the the bill itself would uh, include a statement of the of those facts, uh, uh, Your Honor. Well, I'm sure Comelec has a copy because uh, the the candidate submitted, no, submitted to you. The uh, information that uh, the Senator, Senate President is requesting um, was submitted to our campaign finance office, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, think, I think we might have the information here. Uh, let can me just confirm. Can you give us uh, no, uh, yes, how much the rates uh, were? Yes, sir. On let prime time, on channel 2, channel 7, let me just channel 5. Sir. Did Comelec have any difficulty in uh, monitoring compliance with this provision of the law? Sir, the monitoring of uh, COMELEC was via submissions by the broadcast entities of their uh, reports to us. Okay. So uh, it was a standard procedure that they would send uh, the receipts over to us regularly. So wala namang kami problema. However, uh, there was monitoring by outside actors also who were using um, services like Nielsen, for instance, who were monitoring 
the minutes or the seconds of exposure and then comparing that to what was billed to them. So that was done by third party actors. How was the 2016 elections? Uh, um, how many cases of overspending have you uh, filed? Uh, may I refer that to our uh, campaign finance office? They're the ones tracking that information, sir. Uh, sir, can I answer that? Yes, so, sir, so far, we already have 200 cases of overspending, and uh, we are all, uh, we will uh, gradually uh, filing information and uh, cases against these 200. At marami pa, sir, nasa more than isang libo pa yung uh, pending na dinidiscuss namin. Sa local yan, ano? Pero yung sa, um, uh, sa national? Halo-halo na po yun, sir. Apa. Yes, sir. Meron din, meron din mga yeah, meron, national sir, candidates Apa. na overspent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, alam ko yung monitoring ng COMELEC is number one sa airtime kung lumampas and then sa bottom line kung lumampas sa uh, ano but ang tanong ko kasi is monitoring the compliance of the media entities yeah, with a discount uh, kung yun ang, yun, yun, ang, yun ang pinupunto ko sana if you are, if you are also consciously looking at that oh, I think sir uh, what we get Mr. Chair is the uh, the build the build amounts no um, I'm not so sure if the finance office is able to check that against the Dapat publish na, rate. Kasi, inano ko na, they have a publish rate, then your mm -hmm. comic is also familiar with the publish rate, then mm -hmm. you compute the discount, then that, that's a ceiling amount, di ba? Mm -hmm. Parang ganun. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Chair, that, that uh, the, the claiming of the discount should be done by the political candidate um, in the contract with the, with the, with the broadcast network. So that pagdating sa amin, discounted na dapat yun. So yeah, hindi nyo na, the compliance with this law, hindi nyo na, mm, uh, na, na nakikita. Sure. Yes. yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, we have the uh, uh, records nung uh, mga sinasubmit ng mga networks. And may I refer it to Director Bagid, siya yung head ng campaign finance office namin. Sir. Okay, Director Bagid of the campaign finance office. Good afternoon, sirs. Sa the... Broadcast entities, sir, the media entities submit their uh, uh, contracts with the uh, uh, campaign, fin campaign finance officer, uh, campaign finance officer owner, and with it, your owner, uh, based on the submission to us, we look un into these contracts and uh, we uh, what what reflected in the contracts are already discounted rates. It's it's for the it's for the candidate now to demand uh, yeah, okay, the, the the discount uh, to which uh, he is entitled uh, under the law. So can we hear? Uh, ang problema dun, Mr. Chair. Eh, pwedeng ano eh? Eh, pwedeng sabihin ng station na hindi puno na kami, hindi na kami Ang totoo yun talo, hindi ka nang hingi ng discount eh. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a good Ay point raised by the Senate President. But point Ay, Malapit yun doon sa issue na ano eh, na i-demand ko yung discount, Tama. ayaw akong bigyan. Hindi ba? Eh, sabihin, eh, puno na kami. So, that's ka. Can I, can I request the COMELEC to look, to, to, to look into that angle yes, na, na gano'n na Tama nga, may dis, dis, kandidato may entitled sa discount on paper, but in reality, I cannot get the airtime that uh, uh, I can now afford because of the discount. Because yes, sasabihan sir. ako na wala na, fully booked yes, ang airtime. So, can we, can we, uh, namin, sir. Oh, can, can we look at that angle yes, and then pag-usapan natin how to solve that? Kasi that's a form of discrimination. Ha? Yes, sir. Pwedeng, ma, pe, they can open up time slots discounted to favored candidates and then all sa iba sasabihin puno na pero that's beyond the the yes. uh, scope of the pending bills kasi ito discount lang eh. but uh, very good point <laughs> Mr. Sen. President uh, you opened our eyes to this one uh, bakit may karanasan ba kayo sir? <laughs> Mr. Chairman matagal na ako sa broadcast Mr. Chairman eh. <laughs> hello uh, yes, uh, 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 Secretary Coloma. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, 
doon sa obserbasyon ng Senate President no, na maaring uh, mas puno yung ating mga kapatid sa broadcast, eh, sabi ko ng mga kasama ko dito, sa amin nyo nalang ipasa sa print, mas marami kaming space. <laughs> Kaya lang po, kailangan i-consider din sa kasalukuyan, merong limited, may limit po doon sa batas eh, o sa comedic rules, na up to one-fourth page lang po yung aming... Uh, at uh, three times a week lang po. So, may limitation sa amin. Kung ililift po yun, eh mas marami talagang space na available. Pwede, Mr. Chair. I think we should study that. Uh, para lumakas yung mga print. Kasi hindi, hindi exorbitant ang presyo eh. Hindi exorbitant. Uh, yung frequency man lang. Yung frequency. Kung hindi man yung size, yung frequency. Uh, di ba? Alisin yung limit. Uh, thank you for that uh, input, uh, Secretary. Ah, well, uh, oh, yes, uh, Director Jimenez, again. Mr. Chair, I'd also like to point out that uh, most of the bills, they don't touch on online advertising either. So, uh, we saw in 2016 how effective online uh, activities were. Baka for 2019, we might be looking at an environment na mas relevant ang online advertising pa than it was before. But it's not regulated at all. So, that might be something that the committee would like to look into. Well, uh, that is very, um, shall I say, virgin territory. Because uh, there are, we will be walking on eggshells, uh, Mr. Chairman. Because, for example, in my, let's say, a, a, a candidate who has uh, 5,000 followers on Facebook, if he places his ad in his web uh, page, Know, is a vote for uh, uh, Sheriff Abbas. Sheriff Abbas for uh, mayor, you know, or let's say for senator. And uh, his 5,000 followers repost it or share it. How, we can, how can we control the number? Ngayon, if we lagyan natin ng control ng uh, specific uh, number, and a, a, a candidate who is uh, against or competing against uh, Chairman Abbas will repost his ad more than the limit, disqualified. Madalin laruin yung social media dyan, yung internet, danger. Uh, I think, as I said, no, pag-aralan natin mabuti yan, uh, we, we will... Uh, we will accept uh, or we will wait for uh, suggestions from Comelec on how to go about yeah, this. We will Medyo on yan. Virgin territory. We will wait for uh, ideas from the Comelec. But in the meantime, <coughs> ito na muna, that the TV, radio, and print ads, ad rates, which we are uh, regulating in these bills. Uh, so from the KBP, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Attorney Hularbal representing the KBP. Uh, the KBP would like to express their support of the objectives of this bill in ensuring the dissemination of wide dis wider dissemination of information and political issues during election, uh, among them by the increase in the discounts of uh, political advertisements, uh, which can be approached in various ways, Your Honor. Uh, we will be submitting suggestions because it's either greater discounts or uh, de redefining the basis for the discounts. Uh, but definitely the KBP will support this and uh, ensure that its members also support that move of KBP. Uh, so uh, we will be submitting our recommendations, Your Honor, during the TWG. Uh, by the way, in response to the observation that uh, the candidate must ask for a discount, actually the law requires the network to give the discount. So it need not be asked by the candidate. Your Honor. But it is true that uh, there are limitations on available commercial time. Uh, actually, with or without the election, the industry has already set a limit to advertising time. So uh, uh, we run the possibility of uh, violating that self-regulatory imposed limit unless uh, maybe the law will require us to increase that number. Uh, right now, for the in for the information of the uh, 
for the information of the committee, uh, the limit for radio advertising is 17 minutes per hour. In TV, it is nine, 19, 18, 18 minutes in TV. And uh, it is a self-imposed uh, uh, regulation to ensure that there is uh, viewer and listenership. Uh, it's a protection to the listening and viewing public. You know. Otherwise, the hour will be filled with advertising materials. But uh, uh, maybe in con uh, working together, we can, during a specific period, adjust this so that it can either have of two effects, Your Honor, uh, by increasing the number of available, uh, reasonable, uh, available political time or advertising time, the rates might effectively lower. I, I don't know, I, I'm guessing here. But it should because of the supply and demand principle. Uh, so uh, those are just suggestions. So we can come up with more during that PWG, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, uh, now that uh, you, you've it, it's been mentioned, might as well ask Comelec on how they would categorize a certain advertisement on television. Let's just focus on television. Example, um, like what we're experiencing in our television program on, uh, on uh, Channel 7, the noontime show. In an hour, we're limited to 18 minutes. There are times that we use all of the, we use 10 minutes in one, <coughs> uh, one sweep because we want one hour of no advertising. There was even a time that we had two hours and a half of no advertisement. Okay, just to ma uh, to uh, make sure that the, the story and the entertainment is all there. But then we lump it into one 18 minutes or one 10 minutes. Now, if the regular rate is, or the regular uh, allowed uh, self-imposed uh, time is 18 minutes, <coughs> then Comelec can easily classify that into, let's say, a 30 second there, a 15 second there. Now, how would Comelec classify what television programs are doing now, especially live television programs, of uh, advertisements within the show and not a commercial. Is how do you classify that? Oh, yeah, wala nang time yan. Time yan. Uh. May, may volunteer, Your Honor? Yes. Because we discussed this with Comelec before. The advertising outside of the regular spot, for example, a background uh, poster, is considered time exposure. So if the name of the candidates is in a tarpaulin, that's being counted by Comelec, Your Honor. The name of the candidate. But what if there is nothing that says they'll vote for him? Comelec. Yes, Comelec answer or confirm the uh, uh, statement of Attorney Hularbal? Basically, sir, we're looking at that as uh, a form of native advertising, which is still advertising. Um, yung absence ng word na vote for or vote really immaterial because as long as you're presenting yourself, it, it, it accomplishes a political purpose, which is to increase your visibility, increase your recall factor. So it's still partisan political activity. So, political party. So, you mean, uh, uh, let's say, a, a fellow is being interviewed and he's wearing a t-shirt and the t-shirt says, Pimentel. <laughs> he's being interviewed on Opo. TV about a, about a, um, a car accident. Opo. Oh. Um, I, I think, sir, we have to, ano, huh? we have to oh. nuance that naman. Kasi, kunwari, if, um, if the person is being interviewed and it's a news were the interview, then news yan. And the political advertisement or the political component is not the main point of the exposure. No? Um, so basically, the fact na naka t-shirt siya na, na partisan, that could be treated as incidental to what is happening, which is newsworthy. No? So Alright, so the, the the wala problem na yan. Oh. Okay, again, a game show. The contestant is wearing a t-shirt, says Pimentel. He's a contestant. <laughs> oh. Mapag-uusapan yan sa, ano, sir, sa pag-figure nung uh, gastusin. 
again, it will all come back down to uh, what was the primary purpose of the exposure. Again, kung uh, yung, yung kandidato, walang masuod yung tao eh. <laughs> 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 yung gusto niya suod eh. Pero ang, proble eh. ang problema, so, Senator, yung, yung, kumbaga yung konteksto eh, yung, yung overall nung, nung buong programa ang titingnan mo niyan. Kung yung, yung buong programa ay nakaanggulo sa... So, kung obvious na ginakampanya si Pimentel, yan, pwede mong bilangin yung ilan ng minutes ng exposure, exposure niya. Ganun ba? Sa, parang ganyan. Sir. Your Honor, in fact, there's an example. Uh, if I were campaigning for myself and there's a poster of uh, Attorney Poblador, it's counted with him also. And I think the only exception is if the exposure is because of a newsworthy uh, subject matter. I think that's the only exception here. After beyond that exception, for example, if you, if you just show the color and the color ref, uh, refers to a party, then that's already counted against you. Yes, it's part of the dis definition, but the color, the identification of a... Maybe in other jurisdictions where uh, a color pattern is distinctly identified with a party. Dito, wala pa eh. We have not attained that level yet na may one, a, col a color means a party. Wala pa. Which one again, again? Yes? Part of the implementing rules. But the implementing rules of what? Of the... Comelec. Fair Elections Act? Color? So I, I think uh, what's being referred to is, is uh, that in some cases, um, colors which may be identified with a particular faction or a political, political party will be considered uh, to a certain extent partisan political. So if I'm wearing yellow in my television show? Dila one. I think in application, it's more of, for instance, um, on election day, um, a mass of people, they show up in a in a particular precinct and they're all wearing the same color and it's ident it's a color identified with a particular political faction then the bi might say that that's uh, during election day yes sir uh, but uh, for, for ads hindi campaign naman yan na apply uh, it doesn't apply during the okay. campaign period okay okay back to back to the bills no? the worry the worry of some is that one year before, I I increase the young rates because that's the yes. that's the rate to be applied uh, during election time. Eh. So, uh, I, as chair of this committee, uh, I'm I'm entertaining. I'm telling the industry players as well as the NGOs. Now, I'm entertaining the idea of uh, not using just one year, but averaging maybe uh, th three three or five year. Uh, period of your published rates is, is that is that alarming to the industry if you do that to uh, be the basis where we will apply the discount huh? your honor uh, well we'd like to dispel the notion that we increase only during an election period actually we do increase every year uh, and uh, averaging averaging uh, might be a solution might be a solution to rationalizing the basis for the discount we are not uh, we are not averse to that, Your Honor, as long as it is uh, rationalizing the basis. Will be the average of published rates over X number of years. That is where we will now apply the discount. Okay, so Major, yes, we have. We are, I, I have explained. And then, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the Comelec will agree that really the intention of the law, and uh, we should. Uh, uh, clarify this now, 120 minutes per candidate. Mataas pa nga yun eh. 120 minutes per candidate, sir, but I think ang, ang palaging nire-reklamo uh, sa amin, especially pag nagsusulat na kami ng implementing rules and regulations, is that uh, it can get a little constrictive sa candidates. No, um, We have, in fact, um, on, on uh, in a certain election, applied that pero the next election ng sobrang dami nang nagrereklamo nga na ginawang per station para mas lumawak ng konti. Ang ang problema uh, Mr. Chairman is that doon sa batas wala ngang qualification kung ano yung reckoning point mo. Ano yung 120 minutes uh, per candidate per what? Uh, again, so is it uh, per station and then there are different kinds of ads that cross over certain categories. Medyo maganda siguro kung ma 
kung maklarify natin yun. No, no, no. Uh, you see, ito, ang Comelec, ha? De, kailangan kakampi namin kayo dito. Okay, yes, sir. Agree ako dyan. Um, 120 minutes per candidate. Palagyan natin. Per station. Na sinabi ng Supreme Court dahil may nagpetition. Hindi ko alam kung sino yes, yung mga nagpetition. Petition sa Supreme Court, yung daw batas, eh, hindi mali daw ang interpretasyon. Ang interpretasyon dapat daw is marunong pa sa aming mga otor, eh. Kami yung nagsabi ng 120 minutes per candidate, eh, sila daw nagsasabi 120 minutes per station. Palagay natin. Okay. 120 minutes. Let's take uh, Channel 2. Andito ABS, eh. Magkano yung average uh, cost ng 30 second there in the 2016 election? Hindi ko ma... Almost 1 million. 1 million eh. Meron, sa, sa prime time, 1 million eh. Di ba? O 1 million, uh, 120 minutes, ilang 240 million. Yes, sir. No? Sa Channel 2 pa lang yun. Yes. More or less, ganun din sa Channel 7, baka mas mura na konti. Pag palagay mo ng ganun din, 240 million. 480 million na. Magkano limit ng isang kandidato? Actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, yun nga po yung point doon. Uh, meron kang limit na broadcast airtime, pero meron ka rin spending limit. Kaya nga, the so spending limit is still the what? Nung uh, five, uh, ten pesos. 5 pesos per candidate? Yes, sir. For President, 10 so pesos. Senator. So uh, senator. senator, 5 pesos. 5 pesos per candidate. Um, 3 pesos if you have a political party. 5 pesos if you are uh, an independent, independent, that's per voter. Okay, so 5 pesos right. per, uh, per voter. Opo. And how many voters? Um, in, in 2016, around 50, 56 million. Oh, well, again, 56 hmm. million. 56 million, 5 pesos times 56. Malaki. <laughs> yeah. 280. 280. 280. Kalahati lang yun eh. 480 yung ano eh. Yes, lampas, sir. Lampas, eh. Dalawang TV stations ka palang naglalagay. So, it's impractical na gagawin ng Senado or ng Kongreso na two, 120 minutes per station. Impossible eh, because it is violative of the law sa COMELEC, sa Paid Elections Act. Mr. Chair, um, as far as the COMELEC is concerned, syempre, of course, we, we support your, your efforts towards this. But I, I would like to point out also that that is the responsibility of the candidate. Yung candidate ang magtitimpla ng expenses niya kung saan niya gusto ilagay yung pera. Just because you have a 120 peso, a 120 minute uh, limit, hindi ibig sabihin sasagarin mo yun or kailangan mong sagarin. So, um, it really depends on how the candidate chooses to use his campaign funds and where to place the expenses. So, ang, ang point lang po is that, ang, I think ang point lang ng decision was that, um, mabigyan ng freedom yung kandidato na mag-decide. Kasi kung 120 minutes sarado, as in that's it, that's all, um, considering the number of the number of broadcast areas, the number of stations, the number of possible outlets, marami silang mamimiss out na hindi nila malalagyan ng placement. I, I, think, I think yun po yung argumento noon. And that ultimately, even if you have 120 minutes to, to use up, you don't have to use them all up if it's outside of your budget. Just amend your statement, um, Director Jimenez. When you said the uh, uh, candidato, uh, leave it to the candidate na siya mag-decide. Dadagdagan ko yung, amend na ako yun. Kaayaan mong yung kandidatong mayaman ang mag-decide. Yun ang ibig nating sabihin, ano? Lahat naman po ng spending limit ay ultimately pabor sa mayamang kandidato. Nga, kaya nga, we, we were hoping na kahit papano, the Committee on Electoral Reforms will be able to, with your help, with COMELEC, will be able to find a middle ground na may laban-laban naman yung... SP, nga, eh, the mere fact that Congress put a cap on the airtime for TV and uh, radio, no matter kung per station or per candidate, totality yun, meaning to say, sa mind ng legislator, we need to put a uh, limit on spending. Yun yung meaning nun eh, whether per station or per candidate. So, well, let's, let's be true to the real intention, which is total airtime. Yun yung ibig sabihin nun eh. 
180 total radio exposure for per candidate, 120 total TV exposure per candidate. Ako, ako rin, nung practicing lawyer ako, pagbasa ko, no, yun ang impression ko. Nagulat nga ako sa Supreme Court case na first station. But we have, we have here uh, GMA pala, Attorney Maria Luz Delphine is here. So maybe she wants to say something. Bakit na palayo ang GMA sa inyo? Ha? Ah? Ah? Ganun ba yun? Baka, oh, mag, okay. baka magsikuhan. Uh, okay. Yes, Attorney, Attorney Delphine, please. Good afternoon, Your Honors. Um, we, uh, the network will be uh, submitting its formal position paper. Nevertheless, we'd just like to express that we also subscribe to the um, objective of the law um, to have an informed electorate through the discussion of political issues during the campaign and prior to the campaign for them to vote wisely and, of course, uh, to afford the candidate uh, level playing field. However, we would also want the um, Congress, the Senate, and the House, of course, um, to consider the business operations of the media outlet and to allow the market forces to dictate the rates to be that will be charged to the candidates. Market forces uh, will dictate the published rate. Then the law will mandate the discount from the published rate. To prevent this, this uh, artificial spiking or, or the suspicion or of uh, spiking the year before, we will average it for X number of years. Ma'am, that's the plan. Uh, is the plan acceptable, ma'am? Ganun ang plan. Yes, uh, Ms. Ako. Whatever happened to the plan that government subsidized part of this spending so that even the poor can afford to be, uh, to be, to be able to campaign? Uh, not really subsidy, but no, a purchase of Comelec Hour. Yun, yun eh. no, that's the, I think that's the fairer. Ano. No, it will be to the account of the, it will be uh, deducted from their tax payment of the air of the, let's say, ABS-CBN and Channel 7, they can credit credit that airtime that they give free <coughs> to, let's say, 100 candidates. A certain amount of time, if that can be inserted in the law, so that even the poor people can afford to be in the television. We, we, we will study that, but one approach also is the Comelec Hour. At least, meron din ang poor na exposure na. Pero ando pa rin si Rich, kasama pa rin yun, kasi hindi sila dapat mag-discriminate. But we, we will study, there is no pending bill about that. There is no. In other governments, they do pay for the, they, they subsidize, you know, the candidate's time. So if, uh, can we not if adopt? If your group can uh, draft a bill, submit to us. If we like it, then we will also uh, uh, file it. Okay. So, okay na tayo dyan. Ah, yes, Barbie? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, we'd like to uh, register a reservation or even opposition to the idea of averaging the published rates. You see, in our industry, we don't do it year in, year out. We only uh, make our adjustments because of competitiveness. Uh, we only make the adjustments when it's warranted by particularly operational cost and materials. So if therefore, if you average it out, the past rate will pull it down and therefore might not be viable for us. So major caution lang doon, Mr. Chairman. Of course, we will invite the industry players when we now finalize the bill no, uh, in a te technical working group. But uh, we will we will uh, pursue uh, these bills no, because agree na mga lahat sa purpose. Eh, uh, democracy, sh democracy is already expensive. We should not make it more expensive. Uh, ah, I mean, Mr. Mayor, Director, you were raising your hand. Uh -oh. So, ganun ang gawin natin. But a but, uh, good point, no, that I think we should now distinguish print from the broadcast. No? Let me, uh, uh -oh. Because, pero, be, no, because, and, and, uh, to be honest, to be honest, the complaints that we have received do not really involve the print. Uh -oh. But uh, may I also remind the public, uh, no, and everyone else, that most of the news from television and radio come from the print. Oh, sila source talaga eh, kung tutusin eh. Diba? Sila, sila, sila pinagkukunan ng istorya eh. Kung tutusin, na, hindi naman lahat, ano, all the time. Kasi lately, ang isa sa mga ikinalulungkot ko, karamihan ng mga news broadcast ngayon, CCTV. O, oh, tingnan nyo. Puro galing sa Facebook. Ang mga news, puro galing na lang sa Facebook eh. CCTV, hindi na yung uh, legitimate uh, journalism. Uh, let me just tell one and all that we are going to fast track this one. Huh? Kasi 
this we, we want this to apply to next year's election. So pl uh, please uh, cooperate and help us. Uh, no? so, so, okay, so we will move on. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Thank, uh, you, your industry Thank you, Your Honors. Industry players. Let's move on to the Senate bill and the House bill, which both now uh, touch on the allowable per voter expenditure for the different uh, candidates, li different levels of government. So has the, has the COMELEC uh, studied the, the said bills? Y yes. Yeah, we, may we have your inputs? Refer to Director Bagit. Uh, okay. Director, please. Good afternoon again, Your Honors. Um, the Commission Elections, Your Honor, is uh, consistent with this, Your Honor. We welcome and support any passage of a uh, bill, Your Honor, that will uh, increase the amount of uh, allowable expenditures uh, to be made by the uh, uh, candidates and the uh, political parties, Your Honor. Um, your Honor, I have a we, we have Your Honor comment on the particular, we have comment, Your Honor, these bills, particularly, Your Honor, that uh, Your Honor, we are requesting, Your Honor, an insertion of provision that uh, the, the Commission elections be ha or have an authority, Your Honor, to, to revisit or, uh, or look into this uh, amount, Your Honor, for, for a period of, for example, Your Honor, three years or every six years. Your Honor, that, yes, sir. Your Honor this, this is like the same authority, Your Honor, that you granted to the Commission in extra law. Uh, we're in yes sir uh, your honor in a uh, republic act uh, number uh, 10756 an act rendering election service non compulsory for public school teachers authorizing the appointment of other qualified citizens uh, section 4 the, your uh, section 4 thereof your honor uh, which allows the Commission to review in consultation with DepEd the every three years, Your Honor, from the effectivity of the law, the amount of the honoraria to be given with the members of DepEd. So, so Your Honor, we, we would like, Your Honor, the same provision be given to us, uh, um, a reviewing, reviewing authority, probably with consultation, Your Honor, with uh, Banco Central and the uh, political parties, your Honor, so that uh, in fixing the rates so that they will become applicable from time to time, Your Honor. So, uh, uh, so the let, the law, let the law fix a new rate and then uh, after a certain number of years, it will now be the COMELEC which should adjust yun 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 power. Kasi sa nangyayari, Mr. Chair, if I may, yes, Mr. Chair, Chair. every kung hindi continuing, natitenga yung amount. So, uh, same with ESRA, binigyan kami ng authority na i-assess namin from time to time. So every three years, pwede namin taasan yung honorario, no, ar honorario ng mga teachers. Same here, sir, pwede namin i-assess din yung, uh, yung uh, adjustment on the expenditures. So kung, kung busy, okay lang po. Kapag-isipan namin, kasi baka may kaibahan eh. Uh, yung isa kasi benefit na binibigay nyo sa uh, people helping you. Uh, okay yun. So that you, you can... Uh, motivate or entice people to help the COMELEC mo, uh, administer our election. Itatakot ko kasi pagbigay ko sa inyo, baka, <laughs> baka patas na patas, baya ay super rich na lang yung pwedeng tumakbo eh. Lagyan mo lang sa'yo ng parameters para... Lahat pwedeng tumakbo, pero super rich na lang yung merong reasonable chance of winning. Ganun yung mangyayari. We submit. Yeah. Kaya pag-isipan namin. Uh, any, any inputs from the uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Alvia? Yes, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, in previous, in the technical working groups and previous hearings, uh, there was a talk also of um, at, at least adopting CTI for the three years. Uh, it's absent in these bills. So, at least, uh, again, it's driven by market forces. If you, you're always uh, adopting the principle of uh, market forces, then that's the best way. No? It's, uh, it's unbiased, no? and it's based also on present economic conditions. So, why don't you just automatically put a, let's say, a CPI average of the three years, since it's every, we have elections every three years, uh, to determine the adjustment. But then I agree that uh, there should be a base here. No? 
And it would be COMELEC to announce the new rate upon following the formula in the law. Correct. But uh, at so least there's a criteria. Same as same as any criteria nila. that uh, it's based on the CPI. So that is, uh, they're agreeing with you. Ah, but may cap, no? May merong uh, hindi lang hindi lang free tal hindi lang free na ano, but CPI. Okay. Any other comment? Ah, yes, Mr. Casiple. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to support the proposal for a three-year review. Well, it's already in, uh, in a separate bill, actually, in the political party reforms. And the CPI is the best way to adjust. Uh, I would also like to uh, support the idea in the bill to increase uh, across the board the spending limits, both of the parties and individual candidates, precisely because the last uh, uh, time that we did that was more than... Uh, almost 30 years ago that so the 10 the 10 pesos the 5 pesos and so on are really out of date and uh, the only thing that uh, i would like to for the committee to study more is the question of the difference between the rate for president vice president and so on uh, with particular emphasis on the party list uh, the reason there is party list is also a national uh, constituency and uh, if you, in one uh, version of the bill, it's very low, uh, the, the limit that was set. It's very far from the senator or president, vice president. So the, the, the question uh, I would like the committee to address is why? Because if you're uh, campaigning on a nationwide scale, more or less you will have the same uh, level, at least not very far from each other. And uh, the third uh, comment that I had is that uh, this bill should be reviewed later, particularly in the light of a possible political party reform bill, uh, where we uh, envisioned that many of the spendings actually will be done by parties, not by individual candidates only. M yeah, what I mean here is that uh, there may come a time when uh, the spending limit for a specific candidate is not that important compared to what the party will be spending. But uh, I think uh, the bill has uh, a very laudable objective here to make uh, realistic uh, what is uh, otherwise now uh, being actually violated uh, in practice. And uh, the COMELEC, I think, is, uh, is uh, finding it hard to implement and the campaign finance uh, regulation precisely because there is an unrealistic level that uh, at this current reset. Actually, I, I worry more about uh, the local candidates. You have 50,000 voters, you're running for mayor, you are allowed 150,000 pesos. And then, and then you comply with the law, you file a SOSE stating that you did not uh, exceed 150,000 pesos. So. The, the law now forces our people to lie. <laughs> Pag dati sa senator, kaya naman eh. Sa, in my case, 150 million. Di man, di man ako maaabot talaga na 80 million, 90 million. Kaya naman eh. Pero sa lokal, mas, mas, mas kawawa. And they all file sauce eh, under oath. <laughs> yan, yan ang problem. Uh, any other comments? So, so sa details lang po tayo. It's, it's in the details now. The actual amounts uh, plus the CPI uh, mechanism no? is requested by Namfrel. Are you, are you, are you uh, speaking for Namfrel, uh, no? Eric? So any other comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Sir, may, may pwede ba kaming humingi rin ng tulong? Sir, because right now, the Campaign Finance Office is merely a de facto office within the COMELEC. Maybe we can discuss this with the TWG. Uh, maybe you can help us na gawin nating departments eh, para mapondohan yung pag-create ng campaign finance department within Comelec. Kasi parang okay, de facto kami sir, uh, wala kaming... Hindi, ah... Uh, Because of the workload, the number of yes, reports yes, to be reviewed, yes, uh, in the people, okay. We need CPAs, so, but lawyers. I'm discussing with the Senate President if we can do it in one shot with this bill, but since it's a different topic, we, we, will, we will come up with a separate bill 
for this. Uh, but at least we got your idea. And the last so thing, sir, uh, is although it is uh, uh, retroactive in nature, considering that it affects criminal offenses, baka pwede rin ilagay, sir, sa bill or sa batas na talagang retroactive yung effectivity niya. Para klaro ba, sir, kasi yung mga pending, kapag na-approve yan, we will dismiss it. So, para wala ng discussion, Atama, although the under penal law. Yeah, the spirit of uh, criminal law, it's favorable. It's retroactive. Yeah, favorable Pero mas maganda, sir, naka-state doon para kami rin, hindi kami uh, mag-aalanganin to dismiss yung mga na Tama. benefit ng batas. Tama, sir. Okay, so we will now form a technical working group, uh, Secretary, to, uh, for the two for the two uh, topics, subject matters, no? The ad rates as well as the uh, ceiling, uh, the allowable uh, expenditure per voter of candidates. Uh, we will invite you, your groups, to help us. Kasi sa details na ito, matter of uh, amount, what is now the reasonable amount, Siyempre, may kanya-kanya tayong basis kung ano yung reasonable amount. Even siguro yung original amount was was just also plucked from uh, from thin air but using some uh, some assessment. So, so magtulungan po tayo rito. The committee secretary will inform, of course, the COMELEC and the NGOs as far as the MON, sa tulong kayo doon, as far as the uh, allowable amount to be spent by candidates and then the industry players in the broadcast, TV, and print for the other bills. So, any other matter, Mr. Senate President? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much for uh, handling your committee and for calling the, uh, the hearing. Uh, just a word of caution to Comelec. If there's a way you can uh, scare Smartmatic, do so. If not, I tell you, I don't trust them. And you have to watch out in the 2019 elections. I think uh, uh, it's a very fair uh, warning to you. So in, in, in addition to your official response to the issues raised in the privileged speech of the Senate President, I will uh, adopt now the suggestion of Attorney Chong for you to submit raw log, the raw logs, the raw logs, hindi daw printed kasi pwede daw galawin yun eh. Oh, start, start submitting raw logs specifically relevant to, this, to the privileged speech, yung May 8th. Uh, ang ano ay ano the early transmission so May 8 and then May 9 nang before uh, 7 p.m. ba nag-close noon so yun 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 yung yun yung relevant na time eh. okay so roll roll logs in uh, in addition to printed copies eh, yes yes ED sir may we also request for a copy of uh, attorney Chong's presentation so we know what he's talking about we will the committee will require him to to yung PowerPoint niya lahat. Yes, oh, yes, to give it yes. all to you. And, okay. and, and finally, sir, for the uh, ads, uh, kung pwede isama sa TWG yung uh, sign language para maging inclusive yung ating mga ads for TV. Para so, I, I, ano idea, idea niyo, sir? Eh, that the, kasi ang, ang ad ang ad candidates ang gumagawa ng content. Eh. So, for to require now the candidates na yung ad nila May sign, may sign language yes, na doon. Pwede pa nga rin mayroon siguro rin ang tawag mo doon. A closed captioning. No? Uh, yeah, the good, the good point. Uh, we can, I think that is germane to the subject matter. We can add that. No? Uh, so, uh, ca can you, uh, uh, Comelec will also sit in the TWG and can you, can you representative champion that, please, that point? We will do that, okay. sir, yes. Okay, so one last appeal to the Comelec. Please learn from our uh, past experiences. Wag nang po pa ulit-ulit. Na, no, okay, so one appeal lang kasi and then we see you again in the JCOC on the AES August uh, 6 so thank you very much everybody magandang araw po sa inyo lahat the hearing is hereby uh, adjourned